Hello, little ones. Would you like to hear a story? I've got one for you. From Rolling with Remix. Long ago, the land of Erion was a land of plenty, and many wanted to lay claim to its riches. When those who lived in Erion could no longer agree on who held what, civil war broke out across the entire realm, until the kobolds, in desperation to keep their kingdom afloat, summoned the dark and terrible Dragotha. The great dragon cared not for the alliances constantly made and broken across Erion, and razed many of its great cities to the ground, until a last desperate alliance finally slew the titanic worm. With no one in any shape to continue the fight, an armistice was reached, and the Great War ended. But tensions were still on the rise. Thirty years later, a ragtag group of adventurers who met at a harvest festival and joined forces to look for the missing mentor of one of their band were hired by a mysterious old man to travel to the great city-states of Erion and perform acts of heroism that those in power would not approve of. But those same acts served to heighten tensions across the land, and the old man, secretly a scheming mind flayer, revealed that once more, Erion had fallen into a great civil war. Now, with militaries and dark powers on the rise, our heroes gather their forces in hopes of saving what they can before Erion once more falls into ruin. Momo, the Aarakocra cleric. You're my friend. You're my family. And I'll protect you at all costs. Corellia, the kobold paladin. I will not make the same mistakes again. Malathane, the half-elf rogue. I won't stand idle. Not while people's lives are at stake. <laughs> oh, this should be fun. Quintessa. The human fighter. You shouldn't be surprised. Everyone is out for themselves in the end. And Scam Lycan, the goblin artificer. There are three candidates, death, taxes, and my ability to dodge both. Unprepared though they might be, our heroes find themselves at the front lines of a great battle to save the fallen empires. Last time on Rolling with Remix. Fallen Empires. Malifane and Quintessa had a terse conversation about where their relationship was. That ended in Malifane walking off saying he'd talk about it tomorrow, and Quintessa breaking down in the middle of the hallway. Momo decided to offer Malifane some relationship advice. Mostly the advice that, if not treated properly, the relationship with Quintessa could turn toxic. Corellian and Quintessa, meanwhile, headed into the woods for their own, separate, heartfelt chat. And when Quintessa confessed that she was partially responsible for the death of a child and just wanted someone to be angry at her, Corellian obliged, which did somehow seem to help her mood. Things were starting to look up for the party. Unfortunately, the next morning, the truth came out through some slips of the tongue and judicious casting of Zone of Truth. That Scam had lost Trevlon's book to Mr. Fox. Momo stormed out in disgust. A catatonically angry Corellian did their best to keep from doing anything rash. And Malifane, after throwing some rotten apples at Scam, got a fireball directly to the crotch for his efforts. Splintered at the realization that Scam and Quintessa had been keeping this information from them, the party split off to stew in their own ways. Malifane decided to spend the time baking, Quintessa moved off to the library to do some thinking, and Momo, stewing by a lake, had the idea to try and contact Mr. Fox to get the book back. Unfortunately, Momo could only contact a representative of Mr. Fox, who said that a pentagram needed to be smeared on the shrine inside Batonrance Hall, in blood, before the Yugoloth would consider releasing Trevlon. As Momo's only other cutting implement, a sickle, had been dulled by use, he decided to use his magic to find the sacrificial dagger that Thavagath had hidden away so long ago for Momo's safety. Corellian stewed in the Rose Gardens to try and catch their breath, and Scam, after giving them some time, decided to meet them and apologize, saying that actually having the apology accepted was not what he came out to do, just to say that he was sorry. Corellian confessed that part of the reason they were so angry was that they had come to love Trevlon in their travels for a long time, at least since the first visit to Ashen Alora, and they've had a terrible time reconciling that fact 
with the promise that they made to Hespera. Angry, despondent, and, in some cases, desperate, our heroes now spend their time around Battenrant's Hall, still reeling from the revelation. What plan will our heroes make for getting back the book? What will using the sacrificial dagger again do to Momo? And how many episodes will it be before this party is finally happy? Find out on tonight's episode of Rolling with Remix, Fallen Empires. Hello and welcome to Rolling with Remix, Fallen Empires, the show where everything is sad and everyone's got problems. It's a fun show! We have fun! We have fun playing d and I am your host, Alex, and I am here with my usual cast of characters. We have Atwas. Therapy does not exist in Erion. <laughs> we have Scott. I did it, guys! I got over my fear of thunder so I don't have to skip the intro this time. Are you proud of me? Are you proud? <laughs> we have Jojo. Here we are in fear and hold on. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come back! <laughs> we have Queen. Oh me. Um fuck. <laughs> I don't know what I say. <laughs> Incredible. And we have Xander. Hi, it's Gam Lagley, Irian's first licensed therapist. Nice to meet you. Get the fuck out of my room. Well, okay, I'm sorry. I'm not a therapist. I'm a Freudian. <laughs> Fucking hell, I'd hide uh, you. <laughs> so tell me about how great cocaine is. There's so something to say up. about that cigar then, eh, Scam? <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. So tell <laughs> so me about your mother. Not just a cigar. Oh, all right. So, when last we left off, uh, it was actually before I get into that. When last we left off, never mind. We are in the third week of Camp Streamix. This is where all the various streams of Internet Remix are basically competing to see who can get the most points. Uh, currently, Team Fallen is in last place, which is incorrect, as we are the objectively best team. So, if you want to donate bits or have any other method of getting us points, that would be most appreciated. Uh, um, actually, Alex, the Rainbow Ronies are actually the last place team. We just happen to be the last place <laughs> Get back in your cave! <laughs> Get back into the cave, Scott! <laughs> yeah. Now, when last we left off, uh, if you are new to these streams, this is episode 94 of Fallen Empire, <laughs> so if you want to catch up, I am sorry. Uh... Gotta make sure we all die before we hit 100. I mean, we, we have gotta. a recap that covers the first, like, the 50? 68 episodes, <laughs> 70 episodes. Uh, well, in that case, we'll do another one once we reach episode 140. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Either way, uh, when last we left off, it finally came out that uh, Scam and Quintessa covered up Trevlon in the book, being abducted by Mr. Fox, a Yugoloth. So everyone went their separate ways to sit and stew. Malifane went to do some baking. Aww. Huh. <laughs> Meanwhile, Scam and Corellian had a healthy conversation. Yeah, they Very did. Very healthy. <laughs> what did Momo do again? Oh, Run. right. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to Momo in a bit. <laughs> Yeah, we, we didn't get to Mel and Quintessa last episode, so we're going to deal with them first. Mm -hmm. Here we are in fear, and it's and it's up! So, uh, Malphane, two uh, questions. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> what are you baking? I am baking bread. I am baking oh. bread with fruit in it. Okay. I'm sure and are you proficient no in that whatsoever? <laughs> And are you proficient in cook stools? Oh, no, fuck. I am not. I am in fear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then in that case, Malafane, considering your trouble learning of the expiration date of the apples you've been carrying around, I'm going to have this be an intelligence <laughs> roll to see if you can safely bake this bread. <laughs> Burn the bread! <laughs> I thought I took the fruit from the fruit bowl. Did I not? Uh, I remember saying that. No. 
You took the fruit from the fruit bowl. Yes, I'm just deciding what ability to use, and intelligence makes the most sense. Okay, that's fair. Because you're a nerd. I'm a fucking nerd, aren't I? Yeah. All right. As much of a nerd as you are. Hey. Uh, just straight up intelligence? Straight up intelligence. Okay. <laughs> oh, for Ooh. fuck's sake! Oh. <laughs> All right. Uh, you spend a little bit baking the bread. You get thinking about everything that went down, because... Ooh, is that a lot to unpack? And in the middle of all your thoughts... Wait, how long did you leave the bread in? <laughs> you take oh, out the gosh. bread... <laughs> it's... 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 It's burned. You, it's not toast. It's a little past toast. <laughs> but there is fruit intact in the middle of it. <laughs> is there any way to rectify this? I, I just like to think... <laughs> I just like to think that it's quite literally a loaf of white bread, and there's if you cut it in, in half, you cut it down the middle, there's just in a whole intact, uncut apple just sitting <laughs> in the middle of the loaf. <laughs> Frankly, that's a miracle, the pull off. I, I, I would be a No, I feel like I have to get at I, least a 10 to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I go usually by the 10, 15, 20 system of success, and... <laughs> Yeah, that's below all of those numbers, so... Whoops. <laughs> Jesus. Technically, um, it's a sandwich. <laughs> it's not a sandwich. There's nothing between it. It's a burrito. It's a no. burrito. <laughs> Technically, um, it's bread with fruit on it. <laughs> how does it taste? Not great. Um, <laughs> can I use some seasoning? Maybe a little less time in, in the oven? <laughs> Can I, like, take some... Pe is there... Is this even a point where powdered sugar exists at this point in time? I don't even know. Um, I don't know. You just put sugar in pestle, so... Yeah. yeah. Just Could powder I, up some sugar, and there you I go. Find, like, some confectionery sugar in cup. I don't know, like, sprinkle it in. I'm sure it'll taste a little better. I don't know. Probably. I don't know how to cook. Uh, I, I fight. I don't cook. You can, you can absolutely still put some spices on it at this point. Uh, sugar technically does count to try and soften the flavor just a little bit. Malafane looks at it. Malafane looks at his handiwork and, okay, no, this isn't much better. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, okay, um, this this is a bust. Maybe, maybe, um, uh, wine. Right, she, she, like, she likes... The, the, she likes drinking. Maybe I can get something from the from the tavern. Um, you have a wine right? cellar. The wine cellar. That's what <laughs> I meant. Thank you. Um, I yeah. Uh, yep. Malathane is going to kind of just rush over there and pray that there's something good there. Since you specifically invested earlier, it was either you or Thavagat in making the wine cellar an actually good wine cellar up to Ishka, Majordomo of the House's standards. The, the wine here is a pretty good quality, and considering, you know, you're running the place, no one objects to you taking the bottles. <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, occasionally good, I don't know. Occasionally good. Um, oh boy. Like, okay. if there are any that are have any questions like, wait, don't you not drink? They remember the commotion upstairs and they're like, ah, yeah, go, go ahead. Oh. Malphine, Mal Malphine, hello. Malphine! I can talk. I can talk. <laughs> Mal look, Malphine. Hey. Yeah. I'm going to be Malphine if this doesn't go well. Um, <laughs> Malphine just kind of gives this a slight grimace and just is like, oh god, I hope this works. Um, and I guess if he can find like a a wrapping or like a, a cloth or a bag or something that he can put this all in, then he's going to do that. It, yeah, it would, so. it would be reasonably easy to find like a bag around Batman's Hall. So he's gonna find whatever bag he can grab. He's gonna take the wine. He's gonna take... God, I don't even know what this is anymore. It's gonna be like alcoholic <laughs> bread. <laughs> oh, yeah. Alcoholic Just... Bread. Uh, <laughs> Bread with fruit and a little wine reduction. 
Malfane just like on I... fucking wired brain, just thinking like, I mean, if beer is just alcoholic liquid bread, I guess I can make bread solidified <laughs> alcoholic <laughs> beer. That works. Right? Right? <laughs> right? Okay. Um. At this point, I think he's kind of just waiting for for later in the day, so... Oh boy, there's no... Con is there any construction going on now? There is, actually. I made a handy-dandy uh, Excel spreadsheet to help me keep track of what construction's going on and how long you have. Uh, oh god! What is there, Alex? <laughs> currently, <laughs> currently, the only thing undergoing construction is a practice range in the middle of the manor. There's also the contract with the Adventurers Guild, but you can't really speed up guild contracts. I'm just gonna... You know what? Malafine's gonna watch over the that construction, and if anyone thinks that something's going on, he's... No, no! Not everything's fine. What? It's not like one of Kuma. <laughs> Gosh! Shut, shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Malafine goes to hide the... Bread abomination and his wine as he oversees <laughs> the practice range. Meanwhile, uh, Quintessa, if I am remembering mm. correctly, you went back into the library after, you know, the whole fiasco at breakfast, yes? You are remembering incorrectly. She went for a walk. I see. Anywhere <laughs> in particular? Um, just not really, just anywhere outside, really, because I don't really know the geography of the place, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, kind of near, kind of near the hall is where the alchemist's lab is, and as you pass over in that direction, not only do you see a bunch of, uh, guards running around, one of them, uh, chasing after a dog and managing to catch up with it, all things considered, mm -hmm. you notice some splotches of blood outside the alchemist lab. Some of it's red, some of it is green. Can we not just have a nice quiet day? <laughs> um, I'll look closer. Okay. Uh, make a medicine check. Oh, fucking hell, okay. Trust me to not have my character sheet open. <laughs> okay. Let's not have a single digit. We don't want a single digit. Look, I was optimistic. I thought this was going to be a nice walk where we clear our thoughts, but no. I was asking for too much. <laughs> you win nothing. You lose. Good day, you sir. Good day, sir. <laughs> Good day, sir. Uh, give me a sec. It's taken a while. Okay. Sorry! <laughs> Single digit. Let's hope we don't fuck up. Well, hey. in this way, we're not getting any digits. Yeah. <laughs> you can roll for me if you want. You stare very intently at the blood, <laughs> wondering, hmm, I hope this isn't Chris's blood. In a reference that I'm sure maybe two people <laughs> in the chat will get. Yeah. It's uh, it's Resident Evil, original Resident Evil, where everything was bad. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Oh, if it's original, then yeah. Uh, yeah, you can roll for me because it's not loading. Okay, Ooh. you got a fifteen. Wow. Oh, hooray! Thank you. You know of, mm, you know of one person in Baton Rance Hall who would bleed green blood, and you don't recall Scan getting into a fight outside the Alchemist Lab recently, so. It is entirely possible that the green blood belongs to the Githyanki you brought along and your trip back to the Astral Sea. Oh, shit. What? Okay. Wait, was he injured when we brought him back? I can't remember. <laughs> no, I don't think he was. He was oh, knocked no. out, but not bleeding. Did he commit Sudoku? <laughs> <gasps> you don't see his body. <laughs> uh, I will... Is there anyone in the alchemist lab? Uh, you can knock to check. Yeah, I'll check. He, you knock and you hear a groan from inside, followed by, Doors open! Opens the door. <laughs> Alright. Uh, you see a young woman in 
pretty fancy looking clothes, but still some that you recognize as being from Panmia Academy back in uh, <laughs> back in Port Mirandu. Sitting on a chair next to a table, holding a cloth over to her head, with several bandages and gauze around her arm and chest, who looks over, tilts her head in confusion. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I'm Annabelle. I work here. Don't believe we've met. Uh... No, but are you all right? Uh, got in a little scrape last night. Some kind of orange-green dude came in here, started taking my stuff. Oh. Oh, uh, that's... bad. Uh, yeah. where did he go? Uh, I don't know. He, uh, he ran off after I started, you know... Shooting back. I got him once or twice, but then pff, he disappeared in a cloud of mist after that. Oh, shit. Would have chased him, okay. but I still got a splitting headache. Yeah, I don't... I don't blame you. Are, are you okay? Do you need anything? Uh, should be fine. I got some potions of healing brewing to replace the stuff he took. Mm. Um... Okay, that changes things. A lot. Fuck. Uh, I'm Quintessa, by the way. <laughs> okay. First of all, nice to meet you. Second of all, changes things? Uh, no, no, not changes. Uh, we, we we brought him back with us. Uh, this. Oh, we should have seen this coming. Um, don't panic. We will sort this out. <laughs> um. Okay, couple steps back. We, as in... Oh, as in, um, the people who own the team. I assume you've met them, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I, I know I know the team. How, how, how do you know the team? Oh, um, I'm Malafine's fiancé, yeah. Oh, uh, con congratulations. Uh, thanks, um... Point being, do you, you don't need anything, do you? You're okay. I... I... She stops, slowly looks your way. That is not the response I would expect from the congratulations. It's... Uh, complications, you know how it is. I, I mean, if you need someone to talk to about it... <sighs> Uh, it's, I, I, I wouldn't want to bother you when you're injured. <laughs> I have nothing else to do today but sit and wait to be not injured. Uh, well, it's nothing big. Well, it's a little big. T tiny bit big. Um. Uh-huh. I've angered him, I think, and I just... I don't know. Must be big if Alphane's the one who's angry. I... Have you met Eskel? Uh, yeah, we, we met back at the Academy. There was a whole thing. Page Golem went crazy. I was one of the people who was still there trying to figure out, you know, how to take it down. Alphane mm -hmm. and the rest of them did it. Or, you, you, you probably know that. They probably told you about that. Actually, no. Oh, she says. <laughs> she gets up, scoots out another chair, uh, slides okay. it towards you. <laughs> Sits down. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh. So, uh, clearly there's a lot going on with you and Melophane, and, like, I don't want to offer relationship advice, because a lot of people are apparently judging me on my relationship. Uh, well, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, it, it is, it is what it is. I've, I've tried clearing it up, but, you know, sometimes people don't listen. The important thing is, you know, I tried. I... Went out, talked to some people, which was really hard to do, you know, back when I was still a student. Barely any time 
uh, between studying for a test, poring over, like, it, my incomprehensible books on medicine and herbology and the like. Al- alchemy was fine. The rest of that was like, oh, oh okay. I, 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 I am rambling. I, I am rambling super hard. I apologize. Oh, no. no, no, do go on. This is, okay. it's nice. Right, right. Well, um, cannot say I had much of a social life back when I was at the Academy. Can't say I have much of one now. People still give me funny looks. I'm pretty sure there are some people who don't even know I work here. Yeah, well, um... That speaks to me. Um, I'm a author, you see. Okay. Uh, I'd normally... My social life is publishers, basically. Mm. Well, uh, I suppose one good thing of uh, living where you work is, theoretically, that's a, that's an easy fix. I mean, it's probably not gonna stop the awkward stares and the whispers behind your back and, and the judgment and all that, but, like, the more people I get to know around here, the more people... That, you know, smile when I pass them by, the more people that wave, the more people that ask, Hey, Annabelle, how was your day? And usually the day is just fine. It Like, nothing special about the day, but just, like, knowing people are interested and care. You know? Well, that's true, but at the same time, it's a little awkward, isn't it? Uh, of course it's awkward. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. They tell you everything at Panmia Academy about how to make friends. And that's the most important thing, turns out. Whoops. Hmm. Doesn't well, mean you shouldn't do it. I... <laughs> well, well, perhaps. Um... It's just that worry of, uh, would they like me at all, you know? I mean, yeah. But you miss every shot you don't take. Her eyes kind of, like, light up a little when she says that. I mean, after all, you came to see me, didn't you? True. Huh. So, you, you got at least one friend out here. Yeah. I suppose I did. Okay. Um. Well, I can't say for sure how long I'll be here, but, uh, yeah, I, I can try that. All right. Well, again, uh, I can't exactly promise that it's gonna be all hunky-dory in a day, but, uh, who knows? Maybe that'll help with, uh... Oh, I, I'm mad at you, and I'm not telling you about the time I br- broke apart this magic explodey thing made of books. Maybe, you know, maybe a little more of those conversations will happen naturally rather than you hearing about them third-hand a couple months after. <laughs> That's true. I... Ugh. Oh, God. I mean, I can't... I can't blame Malafine for it. He got a lot busier than he expected to. <laughs> yeah, I can uh, I can imagine just hearing about some of the places they've been kind of makes me wonder, are they doing okay? <sighs> no. I, I thought it was just me just coming in and being a bother, but no, it's a lot of things. Oh, uh, anything I can help with? Um, maybe, I think some of them just need to talk or to relax for a bit. Okay, okay. And is that something you could help with? Well, I... I could try, but, uh, everything's a bit messy again right now. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> messy 
Messi just kind of describes existence as a whole right now, doesn't it? Yeah! (laughs) (sighs) Well, can't fix a mess unless you... I was about to say, fix a mess. Wow, that that is a lot less motivational than I thought. Way way to go, Annabelle! (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) What? What? No, I know, I know! I'm bad at this! I I am so bad at this, I am sorry. No, I'm... I'm awful at this as well, which means we have something in common, which is great. <laughs> See, there we go. There we go. That's something. <laughs> That's something that works. Yeah, well, we can build from that. Um, hopefully other people in this place are horrible at it as well, so we can build on that too. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. That doesn't tend to attract the most stable people. Who knows? Maybe there's someone else who's as terrible at talk word good as we are. Uh... Do you have any recommendations? <laughs> um, I mean, I know Maggie's terrible at talk word good, but for entirely different reasons. So in, now that I say that out loud, maybe don't start with her. She would probably, like, grump you away within less than a minute. Hmm. Okay, she can be like a... Last result's not the right word. Just progression. <laughs> uh, talk to people 201. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now we just got to figure out who 101 is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe I can just experiment. Yeah. Yeah, I, experiments. Experiments we can do. <laughs> Gestures to the alchemist lab all around her. Goodness me. How long did you study for? Oh, um... I was almost finished with the four-year course when, you know, the golem happened. After that, uh, full scholarship. Uh, this is helping me pay for the graduate program whenever, you know, I get back to that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and of course I am getting back to that. I, I imagine, you know, the whole thing with uh, with my boyfriend is a shoe in to get me into the grad program. You need a big old experiment to prove you're worthy of further tutelage and all that. So, if you don't mind me asking, what's your boyfriend like? Oh, uh, well, nowadays, big, strong, quiet, really good with an axe. I mean, good qualities, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting places, slowly but surely, you know, he's, uh, he's opening up to me. <laughs> oh, good. That's... Communication's important. Communication's great. I hate communication. <laughs> you know, it's a necessary evil. Let's let's just leave it at that. Yeah. Ugh. But no, we will. Well, I will endeavor to be better. Um, I won't force myself, but I'll I'll try. I'll try. See, th- there you go. That that's something. That's something. Uh, th- thanks for coming over. I I appreciate it. The I appreciate it having someone to talk to. Of course, of course. Uh, I hope that healing potions heal the thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, should should be fine within uh, within. Well, by tomorrow at the very least. Yeah. Um. One last question. Do you want me to clean the blood outside? Someone hasn't already cleaned the blood. What the fuck? N- no. Oh my god. I'll I'll go clean it. Uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. And you head out to do- to go clean up the blood. Prestigitation. I love her so much. <gasps> My god. She's such a relatable baby! So, I just realized two things. Um, more. One, more related to this. Holy shit, we've only been doing this for a couple months. Uh-huh. Um, I thought it was about a year or so. Was it? Because Annabelle said that the page goal only happened apparently a few months later. Seriously? Yeah, like, close to half a year, maybe? But several, several months have passed. Like, more than one month has passed by now. Um, second, I could have saved that bread because I just remembered I have inspiration. <laughs> Save the bread! Do you want to use inspiration time. on bread? Sometimes you eat the I, bread and the bread eats you. Doesn't inspiration go away after 24 hours? No. no. It's whenever you use it. Oh. Well, never mind. 
Uh, that might be a homebrew rule to, like, encourage using inspiration, because a lot of people forget they do it, but either way. Maybe it was Bardic Inspiration, whatever. Anyways. I think it's Bardic Inspiration. Anyway. Bardic Inspiration goes after way after a ten minutes. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what it was then. Alright, never mind. <laughs> Momo. Oh, no. You walk back over to the Shrine of Malil, one of the first things that you had constructed when you built Baton Rance Hall. It's, uh, it's mostly unused. Pylani, who previously ran it, is no longer at the hall. Morrissey and Marsh, gods know where they are. And you look over a god you no longer pray to, or the shrine of him, rather. Sacrificial dagger in your hands. Uh... I'm actually so scared right now. I look up at the shrine. And I think of all the times I tried to pray to Malil. All the- how devoted Arias was to him. And how not even that could save him from the horrible death that he had. You... You were never... For anything. No matter how much I pray to you, no matter how much I ask for your help, nothing happened. And the one time Orias needed you, you took him instead of taking me, someone who clearly deserved it more. I don't know why I even believed you. Maybe because I trusted Orias. And look what that got him and me. He slowly lifts the dagger to his, the palm of his hand, and he grips the blade, not enough to cut himself, but he looks at the shrine and he looks back at his hand. <sighs> this is for Trevlon. This is for Trevlon. This is for Trevlon. <sighs> Fuck! And he throws the dagger in the opposite direction. I can't do it. I can't do it. He grabs the amulet around his neck. Serenita! Serenita, please! I need you! You activate the amulet. The... The swirling image of Sirenita appears in clouds of wind and dust that gets picked up around Baton Rance Hall. Looks around. Looks at the Shrine of Malil. Looks over at you. Sees the dagger thrown in the hall behind you. Says nothing. Just sits back, waits for you to say something. I don't know what to do. (laughs) He tries to hold back tears and, like, wipes his eyes and just runs over to Serenita and kind of just rests his head on her chest and just cries. Serenita holds you as best she can, being a construct of elemental air. Gives you some pats on the shoulder. I want to keep Trevor back. I don't know how else I could, but I can't. I know that Orias would be disappointed. And I know that Corelli would be upset. And... I know that Favageth wouldn't be happy. I don't know what to do. I just want Trevlon back. Sirenita gives a long inhale, looks down at you. 
What do you believe is the value of your soul? I don't know anymore. Do you believe it lesser just... than Trevlons, than Corellians, than Navagaths? He kind of looks down and doesn't reply. Irenita nods. Why? Because they're just... They have so much more than I can offer. And all I do is just... I muck everything up. And this isn't a good example. <laughs> just... I hurt Scam. I hurt Corellian. I've hurt Malifane. And I just... I feel like I don't do anything good for this team. And I just... If I could give one thing back that would make anything better, it would be Trevlon, even if he wasn't here, even if he was still stuck in his book, it would be better than anything I could offer. Momo, do you think Trevlon would do the same for you? I do. What would stop this, then, from being an endless cycle? Sacrifice after sacrifice, selling more and more of everyone. You get, ultimately, right back where you started. I don't know. It's all an endless circle. There were wars back then, there's wars now, there's likely to be even more wars in the future. And... As for giving back to your friends, when you, when you, as you say, ruined everything, did they forgive you? Yeah. Do you think they will not now? <sighs> yeah. I... Yeah. I don't know about Contessa or Malfe, but I hope that Scab and Corellian could forgive me for something like this. Zirnita takes in another deep breath. If I may, Momo, point out something that you are forgetting. These friends of yours, the ones that you wonder about their forgiveness, the ones that you think yourselves lesser than, they would not be alive if it weren't for you. You have a gift, Momo. You have a gift and people that love you not just for that gift, but for you. You think that's worth throwing away? More tears, more tears well up in his eyes as he shakes his head and buries his face into the soft, airy feathers of her chest. She, uh, she continues to embrace. It is the position of the gods to direct and not to order. So if this is the path that you want to go down, then I cannot force you away. But know this, Momo. This is not the path I want. This is not the path your friends want. And deep down, I think you know that's not the path you want either. Deep down, I think you know that is just the hurt talking to you. But you are stronger than the hurt. The hurt is all I feel anymore. How do I make it go away? She takes in another deep breath, puts, uh, puts one of her hands onto your head. Not alone. The hurt will never go away if you leave it to fester. There are good people in this world, Momo. You're one of them, and you are among them. 
and good people never let each other hurt for long. So if I can leave you with one lesson from all of this, please just understand this. You are more than what has hurt you. You are what has been reborn as a result. You are stronger than you think you are. You are worth more than you could ever imagine. So many more people. Thank you, Sarita. She nods, and the winds fade away. Momo looks up and around the room, and he looks back at the dagger. I need to put this somewhere. I can't get to it again. <sighs> he's gonna take the dagger, put it in his belt, and he's gonna try and find some place that nowhere, no one can get to it. Not even him. Okay. Make an investigation check. I love it being that one Quintess is like, ooh, what's this? <laughs> ooh, shiny dagger! <laughs> <laughs> Swirly thing! I don't want to tell you where you put it, Momo. Because that would That's give you probably for the a best. reminder as to where it is. Yeah. But you search and search and just toss away the sacrificial dagger, put some stuff over it, so it looks like just any other part of the hall, and walk away, doing your very best to forget it's even there. I think I oh, oh, hey find... guys, I found a knife. It's weird. It's cool. No! <laughs> <laughs> Momo feels like he should tell someone that he trusts about what just happened. So he's going to try and find Corellian wherever he is. All right. I think at this point, Corellian and Scam would be finishing their talk in the Rose Garden. Yeah, so we'd be heading back up towards the hall, I believe, is where we left off. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, Momo, since you're in the hall, as you head out, you see Corellian and Scam approaching. Uh, Momo's stomach kind of like drops as you see Scam because he feels super bad after what happened. Uh, uh, he kind of like ashamedly walks up to them with like his hands in his like his thumbs in his belt just like walking up to them. Hey guys, um Hi, Scam. You shot me with fire, you fucking psycho! Had to get that one out. I was holding on to it for the last 20 minutes. No, I... I'm so sorry. I really am. Um, you I shot me with fire. I know, I know. I you know. shot me with fire and then you punched me in the face. My ascot is fused to my chest hair. You shot Malifane with fire and yeah, then threatened though. to eviscerate him, so... Yeah, he, but, like, he had it coming, though. There's a difference. I lost myself and my emotions, and I don't... I... I'm sorry. I really am. Yeah. Whatever. I, um... As long as we can still uniformly agree that, like... I'm the smartest one in the room. We're outside. Fuck. <laughs> I've been thwarted again. God damn it. First by truth spells, now by rhetoric. 
Ugh. Ah, uh, yes. When will it end? There's actually, um... Something I need to tell you guys. What? Did oh. you, like, kill someone? No. Do you wanna? I mean, what? No. It's a good start. Um, do you um, want to just talk here, or...? It doesn't really matter. I just... I feel like it would be best to tell people I trust. And, uh... Well... You know any of those kind of people? He eyes Corellian. Corellian glares at Scam. I'm wounded. Yes, we've well, established well, I... that, anyway. <laughs> um... So... When, uh, he's, like, fiddling with his thumbs, all nervous. So after I stormed out, I went to the lake back in the forest. And... <laughs> There's a lake in the forest? Yes. I know. No one told me about the lake in the forest? What, you haven't seen it? No. You think I see things? Uh, you are blind, I'm sure. Yeah. Practically. Yeah. I'll take you back there if you like. I want to go swimming at some point, because fuck. I need to do a nice backwards breaststroke. I just float. It sucks. Huh. <laughs> a bird who floats, what are you, a duck? Anyway. Right. Back at the lake, um, I was just overcome with feelings and grief and sadness and I just I he gulps and then I cast a spell and which allowed me to speak with an agent of Mr. Fox oh and so he has like a handler or like it's complicated like his people need people kind of thing? Like, what kind of agent does Mr. Fox have? Um, it was like some skeleton on a boat. Yo. Skeleton on a boat. It's not a bad band name. Anyway, I offered to make a trade in exchange for Treflon's book. And... What did you do to the skeleton on the boat? He said for him to even consider getting the message back to Mr. Fox, I needed to make a symbol on... I needed to draw a symbol on the Shrine of Malil out of blood. And it was a pentagram. And did you do that? I'm not finished. I didn't have any sharp weapons. I didn't have... He pulls out the sickle that's rusty and dull. This has no chance of making any sort of cut on my body. And I gave you my cutlass of the Winter Queen, Carolian. So, the only thing I could even really think of was my old dagger. What, like an old rusty dagger from like your youth, unpolished and all? Savagath have that. You will not believe where I found it. It was in his room, in the floor. Wait, so you just picked up an old dagger from your childhood from the floor? It was a sacrificial dagger! Oh, that's a bit more different than an old dagger. Yeah, it, um... She killed someone with it. It ate their soul. Well, not, well, exactly. not exactly. You have to activate a poison uh, that would... That then would eat this. So, uh, anyway, that's not important. What? Incorrect. The poison and the soul eating are different properties. Yeah, my bad. It's not important. So I went to the shrine, and I couldn't do it. So I talked to Sirenisa about it, and I put the dagger away where no one, not even myself, will find it. Where's that? I don't remember. Ah, useful. Like I would tell you. 
What? I'm the magic. I'm the magic item guy. I can probably like I don't know destroy it. Or that something. thing doesn't deserve to be in anyone's hands. I could. I don't know. Maybe I could deserve it. I destroy. I mean, not deserve. It. I mean, I could destroy it. I'm just saying. I could destroy it. I deserve. I deserve to destroy it. That's what I'm getting at. Are I, you done? I, no. I, You're done. Give me two seconds. Hold on. And I am okay. One, two, okay. Thank you. Well, I'm glad you didn't deface a shrine. That would have probably been pretty bad. I'm more. I'm also glad that you didn't take probably one of the worst deals I've ever heard in my life for the potential of getting back to Mr. Fox, you know? Good good call on not doing that. But, like, theoretically, I could take it and do something like this. You were you? done. Yeah, done. Thank you. I knew that you would be upset, Corelli, and I know that Arias definitely wouldn't have been happy with me, and worst of all... Flavigath would probably come back with a fiery vengeance, knowing that I had done something like that. Oh? A dear friend of mine. Oh, okay. Gotcha. He used to travel with us. Tall fellow. Goliath. Barbarian. Wait, professional you're kidding. fighter. You're kidding. No. He punched me in the nuts like a week ago. What? Oh my god, I won't, I won't go into it now. Yeah, when anyway. we were back in Mothorn. Anyway, it's another, another issue of another time. I'm, I'm going to be honest, uh, Momo. I'm a little conflicted about um, you being... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but scared of me. I mean, I mean rightfully so. Krillian's pretty fucking terrifying. You're not helping. Sorry. All right, not- uh... That God. I'm scared of you. It's that I care about what you think. I care about what both of you think. And if something had happened that would deface the trust that you have in me, I don't know what I would do with myself. Well, it didn't happen. And thank you for coming to tell us and sharing this with us. I won't say warning us about it, because there isn't really anything to warn, but um, no. Thank you for letting us know and um, trusting Colleen's eyes slide to scam us with this. I... I feel like you two are the only people I can really tell you stuff about this. Yeah, well, doesn't help when the other options are not. Blah, yeah, you know, it's a whole thing. Uh, rather not get into it. Are you all right, Momo? All things considered. No, not really. If I'm honest. Yeah, um, it's been a very uh, eventful morning. I'm fairly certain I felt the entire range of sapient emotion at this point. I'm kind of tapped out myself. Yeah. I am too. Um... Well, aside from the burn scars, I'm actually feeling pretty all right myself, so... Um, uh, right. Yeah. Always wanted more burn scars. I said I was sorry! Man, I just got, like, I got the one arm, so might as well just, like, even out with the whole body, I guess. Scam, I healed you. It's you want me to cast Lester Restoration? Shh, he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> uh, you know, no, I want you to live with this one for a little bit longer. It's okay. It's fine. Listen, it's not the only time I've gotten shot with fire, and it's certainly not going to be the last time I got shot with fire. And it's definitely not going to be the last time I'm shot with fire by one of my own teammates. And it's most assuredly not the last time I'm going to be shot with fire by one of my teammates as a result of something I did. 
So, you know. Yeah, but even though it did happen, I probably shouldn't have been the one to do it. I didn't really have a right to do it. Bingo. But yeah, I guess you. Yeah. It's not. It's fine. Don't worry about it. You could have killed me, but you didn't. So I have to consider that all things considered pretty good. I've decided I'm going to institute a new means of getting even with people. Oh. Uh, a much more fair system. And no, Mom, I'm not going to use this on you. Don't worry. It's only going to be reserved for like top tier quality issues. But like, listen. There's been a lot of violence. There's been a lot of infighting. There's been a lot of arguments. And I think, at the end of the day, sometimes, not that I advocate people hurt each other, but sometimes violence is the answer. So sometimes you just really need to go to town on a motherfucker, and someone just needs to get their ass beat, and so everything can be good. So right. that said, get to the I, point. Right? Yeah. So, Bing, here's a great idea. The next idea from Scamuel Felonius, likely Enterprises. Ready? Battle to the death. Loser pays for their own resurrection. <laughs> Kind of like chokes on some laughter. You're joking. No, and I want to do it at some point, but I just need to have the right moment. Not like, not like, like a sport thing. Like, it's actually cathartic, but like, yeah, no, you fight to the death, someone kills the other person, and then, bingo bongo, the loser just drops 500 on their immediate resurrection. I... Fall infallible. I'm not going to say no. If I'm... this happens... If, Big if. When, if this when, is something that when, ends up happening, if when it does, when there it does, is a it, fight to, to the death and the loser pays for resurrection, just let's have it done outside of Baton Rant's grounds, like maybe out these in the fucking people, woods somewhere. These people need entertainment, Corellian. These people, I'm sure, would love nothing more than than to not be entertained entertained heavy heavy air quotes there by our domestic tiffs mm, I mean, okay, yeah they're not paid enough to deal with this shit yeah no, they're, they're, not. they're not and there are normal people not. living here why would they do that to themselves okay. mm, mm. ah well so listen it's a good uh, idea <laughs> you hear in the background have you seen our other options <laughs> oh man, you guys are so screwed. Oh fuck. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, okay, fine. It's it's it's. I will do it outside if it ever happens. When it happens, when it happens, I will do it outside. Um, but there's only one. There's only. I was about to say there's only one rule. There's only two rules to two. these kinds of fights. It's two rules. Rule number one. Rule number one. Okay. Loser has to pay for the resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. That's rule number one. Rule number two, you can't knock out your opponent and try to walk away and be the better man. You have to kill your opponent or the audience kills you. That's it. That's the bar. So I guess that implies a third rule, which is there must be an audience present. So all of us should be okay. present. Okay. You know what? It might be something to consider. You know, I'll workshop it a little bit, but yeah. No, you have to kill, and you have to pay for your own resurrection if you lose. But if you try to be like, oh, no, I'm going to knock you unconscious and walk away, then you know it's like, oh, man, look at this dude just trying to be the bigger man. Okay, boys, stab him. You know, so it's like a good family you want to set up, like, a second for this dueling type thing, or? What are you thinking? Like, like, let's, like pitch some ideas to me. Well, I mean, one option is... We all have to be present so that everyone gets their gets to, you know, air their whatever. And that way there is an audience that could do that. The other option yeah. would be two pairs, one pair of the one pair being the belligerents, the second pair being the second says witnesses and so, you know so like the fish those that. Yeah, so like in those hoity toity highborn duels where they're like, oh, we got the people who've declared duels on each other, but then they've also got their like second hand, which are like, hey, before the fight begins, you two go talk and see if you can convince the other team that they should give up. Oh, no, no, no fuck that. Um, mostly just if somebody does try to walk away, then you have 
uh, semi-neutral parties there to make sure the rules are followed. You know, I do like the idea of the former, where it's more like a collective audience uh, who's not like on one side or the other, who's just there to enforce that things happen as they should happen. Yeah, no, wit- witnessing like that definitely. Yeah, I think I like that one better. Why am I considering this? Because you like the idea, Corellian. This is all a part of Scam Likely's continuing plan to defy the gods by committing acts of murder and yanking the souls back to Earth before they can ascend to the prime, to, to the, 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 the realms beyond. It's all if, part of the plan. Momo, like, raises a finger. What if there's a pit, and the only way you can get out of the pit and get a ladder out is if you kill your opponent? Oh, or you can fly. And then you can... Yeah, no, that's for Wing, and the, it's just a... But I like the idea well, of having... Well, to assume to, that I'm going to be fighting in that thing. Okay, so we'll cut off your wings before you fight, yes. Oh. Um, yeah, no, you were kidding. You were kidding. I was making a statement that could be interpreted as satirical. Let's say that we just... If I ever end up in that pit... What if we just bind my wings instead of cutting them off completely? No, it's fine. It's for, I mean, well, why no, even I think, bother with a pit? We could just go bother? find a clearing then we the gotta, woods. Yeah, and then we gotta like, dig a pit, you know? And plus, like, if we go with the first thing where it's like, ah, uh, an audience. I was like, oh, Mo was taken off. All right, boys, lock and load, shoot him down. Ba-pa, you know, it just, you know, it just, it works. It just works. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> This went off in a different direction than That's I why my thinking. name is Scamuel, Thelonious, Tato, or Likely. So, you obviously had something in mind when you came up with this most Opium, recent yeah. grand Opium. idea. Oh, you meant, like, metaphorically in mind. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, no. no really concretely scary. in mind. Concretely in mind? Opium. But, like, yeah, no, it's, you uh, most... You exactly who you're going to find, don't you? Scam gets like really quiet. And kind of like looks down the ground, like twists his feet kind of sheepishly, and like little draws little circles with his boot and just goes, Yeah, I really want to kill Malifane. <laughs> Don't start anything. I'm not going to start anything. It's fine. No, it's not like a homicide. Well, okay, literally it is homicide, but it's not like a homicidal homicide. It's more like a, Hey, buddy. <laughs> Kablap, you know what I mean? It's everyone walks away fine and healthy, but it's I'm not gonna sh- no, okay, I won't start anything, okay? I'm not gonna be like And the other hey. party has to agree to the terms. Yes. Okay. Unless they really had it coming, in which case they needed to happen Scam. to them. But that's not the circumstances I'm talking Scam. about in the moment. Yeah, yeah, I know. But I also just wanna kill like I, I'd be down to workshop this with other people too. So I mean, like, it's like not set in stone or anything. I don't know if ever, if any of you ever want to fight to the death, I'm here for it. Crowlin like pauses and like <laughs> flexes their claws once. You're considering um, it. Feel comfortable doing that again. You're considering it. I don't think I want to have this discussion right now. Oh, valid. Entirely valid. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a little um, emotionally tapped out, as it were. Don't start anything. I won't start anything. I'll finish Thank it. God. Hey, bam. Mm. All right, cool. Up top. Mm. No? All right. Bad yeah. timing. All right. So you guys like hungry or anything? <laughs> yes, actually, I'm starving. Good. Okay. Yeah, let's get some food. Dinner has arrived, and it is meat in a bun. <gasps> oh, snap! Okay. <laughs> Whoa, they put meat in a bun. I think the correct term is batch. I'll have that you know. That <laughs> rat fucking bastard thought of that idea before me. This is fucking nepotism, okay? <laughs> Who invented this? I'm tracking them down. Have you really not had this before? I Do you know how to cook, thought, Scam? I have never thought to put the meat betwixt the bread, okay? Genius. What do they think of next? 
Who knows? Pre-sliced bread, maybe. What the <laughs> fuck? Don't... Oh, wait, hold on. Scam, like, rips out a piece of paper and he's, like, drafting on a contract. You are going to sign here and assure me that you are not going to do that idea before I get the chance to make it. I don't know. As an acting member of the Tinker's Guild. Corellian, you piece of shit. Don't <laughs> take this from me. <laughs> I had that idea in a dream five years ago. I forgot about it. Yeah, you. we can draft something out later. Fine. <sighs> <sighs> would... I think Quintessa would join eventually. Alright, yeah. Uh, that, that's enough socializing for today. <laughs> I'm assuming at some point you will need to eat, yes. <laughs> yeah. I will come and get this meat in a batch. <laughs> 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 Malafane will sit down as well and if anyone actually bothers to take a good look at him, maybe they'll notice that he's sweating profusely. What the and covered in flour? Like... <laughs> yeah. What? And covered in flour. <laughs> what? No, what are you talking about? There's no flour. Anymore. What? What, have you been exercising? Yes. Exercising or exorcising the demons from inside of you? Which one? He takes a piece of, of meat. <laughs> yes, <Yeah, see? laughs> <laughs> Yes, I thought. So, like, cooking is fun. You know, I've actually never tried cooking before, Kay. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never right. tried it. How really? did you survive on your own for so long? Swindling people out of their food. Uh, yeah. Well, when you put it like that, it really is obvious. Yeah, I, I mean, like you remember when I like, okay, well, no, like I, I, okay, like, I mean, I, I have hunted things and killed things, but cooking is something else entirely that I haven't really. It, 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 it does, does, does putting. Don't you have a, you have does a spell that makes rations? Well, yeah, I make that for myself. That's how I eat largely when I'm. Cooking. When I'm out in the wilds. No, it's not cooking. Does it count as cooking when you, like, t kill a rabbit and then you just, like, fucking overload that thing with fire cantrips until it looks somewhat edible? Does that count as cooking? I no. No, somewhat, yeah. I think. Technically. Okay. Yeah, well, okay, that's really the extent of what I've done before. I'm mostly, like, a takeout kind of guy. To be fair, you would probably put some, like, spices or something on that once you finish. That's what my father did, at least. Well, I thought about that. With it, when I was like out in the wilds by myself, I was like, oh, maybe I can find some sage or tarragon out here. And I was like, this looks like it will be appealing. It has a nice, ooh, a nice minty snap to it and the smell. And then I, well, I won't go into too much detail, but that's the story of how I got sick for three weeks straight. Turns oh, out some plants are extremely poisonous. Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> how did you survive for so long on your own? I call it a both end ordeal in that it came out of both ends. Uh, okay. I, I meant more generally, more. but sure. Oh, All right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I have no fucking clue, is my answer. Yeah. Man, this. this mm, I have an idea. I'll be right back. I want to go into the kitchen, Alex. Okay. Oh, God. I want to <laughs> grab a spare bun. Um, from the meal, I want to slice it up into like sandwich slices. You know, just make it nice and. And I want to like take some of the meat. I look around the kitchen. Before what do you, I see? Before you oh, do yeah, this, and there, I'm not gonna do anything to stop oh, him. On, my, I'm my, just my, gonna my, add my a little flavor text. One second. Oh, oh help! Okay. Help! Before Sorry, you do that, and yeah. this is for flavor text. He's not gonna do anything uh -huh. to actually stop you. Malvin, yeah. like he sees you going to the kitchen, he's like, wait. <laughs> uh yeah dm in the kitchen what do i see all right well uh cooking has just recently finished so uh the chefs are putting away like most of the supplies the uh the salt gentlemen, and butter and meat and whatnot gentlemen put everything down stop what you're doing leave this to me the chefs like in unison look at scam <laughs> Look at each other. Proceed with what they were doing. I put 20 gold down on the counter. Gentlemen. They look at Scam. Look at the gold. Look at each other. Go back to what they were doing. 
I make it pretty. <laughs> they Gentleman. don't even bother with the looking. <laughs> So How would you get back there? Fine. Just ignore me then. Okay, I'm just gonna begin to look up. I'm just gonna grab things that I think look interesting. Okay. Oh dear. Colorful things and delightful smelling things. I just wanna go for things. Great. I you get your freaking kleptomaniac goblin hands on anything loose that you can in the pantry. Alright. Hey chat, who wants to make this kitchen session more chaotic? No. <laughs> yeah, I know I mean yes. Do it. But, so, DM, I don't know how to phrase this, so I'm just going to say this as delicately as I can. I would like to assemble this. Oh my god. Okay. I don't even know what half of these things are. I did not read the labels. We're just going in. Intelligence I with wanna... disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, what? Um... <laughs> Disadvantage, you say? Excellent. Guess you have no I idea what these it. are. How the hell would you know how to cook them? You said you said uh, intelligence disadvantage. Yes. That is an eleven. I'm gonna turn that into a fifteen. Okay. You have piled on every single spice you can onto the meat and slid it in between a bun. And other toppings. And other toppings. And other toppings. Um, I'm sure. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. I'd like to walk back. I'd like to yank a spare chef's hat if that's if you'd be so kind. The chefs will absolutely not allow you to do that. <laughs> What's that? Jibbity, get the fucking hat. Get the fucking hat, Jibbity. Um, Jibbity floats in, <laughs> holds up a knife. They put the chef's hat on Jibbity. There you go. Oh, I got it. I got Good this. boy. No, I got it. I want to do it. it. Please do. Please do. do um, I walk out with... Um, <laughs> I walk out holding the platter with the sandwich. I want to slide it across the table so it rests perfectly in front of everybody. And then I'm going to like point at Jibiti and have Jibiti float over and with the chef's hat, like display the knives and then cut the, 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 the sandwich into equal portions for everybody at the table. And I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, and those currently dancing between the two, I present the best fucking thing you'll ever eat in the world. Momo, for your very delightful inspiration, and what I have delightfully and eloquently named the Scam Witch. Oh! <laughs> Momo takes it in his hands and looks at it in terror. Do I have to? Yes. No. Yes. No. Please. Carlion, Carlion takes it. Takes <laughs> takes one portion and like. He cautiously it. peels back <laughs> the top slice of bread to inspect the contents. He looks at Karelian. It doesn't look like it'll kill me. <laughs> it doesn't look like it'll kill you. It looks like these are things that were never meant to go on a sandwich. <laughs> Momo looks at Karelian. On three? If everybody eats this sandwich, and I mean eats the whole thing, I'll be watching, you will get a reward. A reward. All of us. All of us. What could you possibly give me that would be worth this? I will stop for one day. What? The, this is a not. What does this look like? <laughs> <laughs> Only one. It <laughs> looks, like. I thought. I thought you were good at negotiating, scam. It looks like a pile of condiments on top of me. Oh you know, no, the dreaded condiment sandwich. <laughs> you know those oh, no. in every terrible restaurant. It's like the big belly burger. It's this thing. <laughs> That's a fucking you know, big got, belly burger. I got, some, I got some sweet pickle relish on that, spicy mustard, a garlic aioli. I don't know what the fuck that is. And uh, so, leftover lobster, toast from yesterday soaked in gravy. You know, just <laughs> we could we could have dry aged it, but you know dry aging is always terrible. Malafane squints his eyes, looks to Scam and says, 10 days. Wow, okay, this is why you're not a businessman, Malvade. Um, <laughs> just just eat the fucking sandwich, please. I made it, and I'm bored, and I'm tired. Why not? I'll do you it for ten it minutes. <laughs> I, well, hold on, hold on. There's four of you and four equal portions. I would hate to give one of you a less portion. I'm feeling I generous. Think... I'll split it with you. Yeah, I don't think any of us would mind. <laughs> we could all shave off a bit so we're all equal, huh? Do I have yeah, to? Yeah, Yes. Yes. All of us. That was the deal. I will okay. be watching. <laughs> oh, we're gonna die. <laughs> okay. 
What do we need? Okay. To roll? Do we need to roll a con saving? It is, it is divvied up. Boy. All right, so there's your final bargain. For eating this sandwich, I will stop for one day and eat a part of this sandwich myself. Right. Perfect. Yeah, you know what? Deal. Deal. Curly and holds out a, holds out a claw to shake. Well, I actually didn't get a chance to draft up a contract yet, so if you gave me like ten... Okay, fine. I shake the hand. Um, on three? All right. On three, three, two, one, go. All right. One. Wait, do we need to roll something? Or? Uh, I'm assuming you did not deliberately poison this, Scam. Well, when you ask me, I <laughs> <did not> deliberately, <laughs> no! deliberately poison. No. Uh, all right, on three, everybody. One, okay. two, three, go. With the 15, it's not mm. dangerous to eat. It's eating a big belly burger, so you'll feel the usual amount of bad, but not like roll a con safe to avoid poison, bad. Okay. I mean, it's all right. It's edible. You know, once you get through the ocean of condiments I put on there. Yeah, maybe ease up on the condiments next time. Not in not on your fucking life. Maybe a little less paprika, please. That's I not like paprika. It. I didn't put any what? paprika in there. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. What is it, Momo? What are you tasting? Like pulls out a long black hair. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Oh, no. Who does this belong to? I forgot to put on a hair net. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, wait, Momo, are you implying my hair tastes like paprika? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like. Anybody else getting any mystery ingredients in theirs? I think I found a toenail. Nope, that's just a piece of onion. Never mind. Suddenly oh, Malachi was feeling more inclined to try the bread recipe again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. uh, so after all that, Bert look, walks into the dining room, looks at the scam, which he has a look of really right in front of my salad on his face. <laughs> <laughs> Bert, allow me to introduce you Run. to the scam, which... <laughs> You know what? This is a bad time. I can come back later. <laughs> Oh no, it's oh, no. optimal. Scam promised to stop for an entire day. That's why Bird immediately it. sits down. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll go make more sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. So the deal was already made for him to stop for one day, right? Yeah. So if it's I were to eat another, we would be adding on to the days in which Scam stops. You know, that's a very well, good point, Bert. Are you all implying you would you desire a cumulative stoppage in exchange for more scamwiches? Malafine yes. smirks at Scam and says, I'll even put down a hundred gold. <gasps> you got yourself a fucking deal there, partner. <laughs> I sprint into the kitchen. Get ready, get my shoes! Jibiti holds up a chef's knife as opposed to the regular knife. Where did he get it? I don't know. Jibiti is of many knives and floats after to help prepare the sandwiches. I was going to say, you, Jojo, for the chef's hat. I'm Welcome. going to prepare more sandwiches, and none of them, no two are alike. <laughs> no two are alike. All right. Unique. It's like a public Excellent. deli tray of hell. <laughs> if it means that he'll get off our case. It's How did you know my high school nickname? Penny. Oh, wait, no, wait, sorry. Let me retract that statement. There are no pennies in Iria. It's worth every piece. Bert looks over. So, uh, payout from the merchants we have came in today. Okay. Uh, in between, you know, giving the actual merchants their share, uh, giving some to Lord Stormkirk, and, uh, you know, giving the lot his share, since, you know, he's the main financier of this place now. Uh, mm. There's not all that much... And I came to ask if you wanted me to put it towards the actual maintenance costs, or if you'd just rather me give you all of it. Just um, roll it back in, I'd say. Alright. So, the formula I gave should not have given me five, and yet it did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see why I had two Ds in there. <laughs> That's how much. Uh, that's how much money. All right. Uh, Bert notes that down. In that case, uh, congratulations. That's going to take care of uh, most of the maintenance costs of this place, leaving you to just, you know, invest in whatever. 
Wait, yeah. wait, a breaking character from what we have 85 gold left, or...? Uh, no, that is 85 gold that you earned from the merchants. Nice. Cool. Okay, okay. So that's, uh, 17 split between the five of us. But you said you wanted to <laughs> siphon it back into the maintenance costs. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. My bad, never mind. Okay. <laughs> so that should get you about uh, two more ten days worth, which works out actually really well, because the merchants pay out every... Two ten days. Wow, incredible. We got potentially a self-sustaining merchant merchant model here. Hey, I'll take it. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Uh, now that that's settled, uh, if you don't want to talk about building anything, that's fine, because we're almost done with building and a little bit of peace and quiet could work. Speaking of peace and quiet, not that I don't appreciate having someone else manage the halls around here besides me, but... Uh, did you have any plan for where to go after, you know, you're done doing whatever you do here? Uh... Mm, don't recall. Mm, well... Uh, can we just have two days where we can just sit down? <laughs> no, that's not how this works. <laughs> well, we uh, still need to swing by Baylight, and we yeah. have a job in Merdeal as well, or in the vicinity of Merdeal. All right. All right. Bert nods. Uh, I think it's probably about T minus three, two, one, when the explosion comes from the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> ah, son of a bitch. <laughs> Bert growls. I'm okay. He can put out fires. Put out the fires! What fires? Better not be any fires back there. Mm. I'll go this check is, on This is an excuse for Mal to go do stuff anyway, so he's just gonna check in, just like, I'll go look. Scan, how many fires are there? Uh, there are two that are f fading out, and when they walk into the kitchen, Scam is sitting on top of a cooking pot with the lid firmly attached to it, and has wrapped chains around it, and the pot is like, clang, clang, like, no knocking around a little bit, like, moving. He's, like, sitting on it to keep it steady. He, he looks haunted. What did you make? Sandwiches are alive. The what? Sandwiches are alive. What do you mean they're alive? They're alive. The sandwiches are alive. I infused them with magic and now they've come to life and they want to eat me. You did what? I don't know. I don't know what I did. The sandwiches Malfi. want to kill their creator and transubstantiate. Malfi uh? is just going to take a deep fucking breath and give the bread one more try. <laughs> Momo's going to cast... Uh... Sandwich on it. Uh, dispel the evil and good on the sandwich pot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I'll say <laughs> that uh, magic infused sandwiches count as something that would be affected by dispel evil. <laughs> These are unquestionably evil sandwiches, okay? They have horror. All right. You hear this hideous screeching in a language that you don't fully comprehend, and the pot just. Tips over with bits of sandwich just piling out. Hmm. I think I'm not hungry anymore. I yeah, can't. I think um, I think I need to go lie down. Uh, he, he like wraps his hand around his shoulder and like walks him out. Like it's he okay. like grabs, he reaches over and like grabs one of the little lapels and says. The sandwiches whispered something to me, Momo. The sandwich, okay. the sandwiches don't, told don't look me at something. Them. Don't look at the, it's okay. Shh, it's all they right. opened their meaty flaps into me. They said that God <gasps> is dead. The sandwiches told me that God is dead. I think you think that God is dead, and you told them that in your magic. It's okay. Let's just get you lied down. <laughs> Shh, it's all right. It's okay. Just, I keep all after this. <laughs> Out of the corner of your eye, you think you can see one more sandwich slink away into the shadows, Scam whispering, No! Glory to the like, sandwich oh, that blocks out the sun. Like, no! No! Mama no, shoots like, yeah. a, like a beam of fire at it, like... We shall rise again! And the sandwich is destroyed. <laughs> hey! Momo, you made an open face broiled roast beef sandwich! Up dub! Yeah! I didn't know I could at the do table. that! Head on hands, just looking at the table. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are they like this? I do not know. 
I will say that if you are going back to Baylight with, you know, the whole flower thing, you should probably take it to Kelwin. Because Kelwin would yeah. know what they're doing with it. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. were we were planning on it. Or at least I was planning on it. I don't know about everyone else. Well, obviously, I was just waiting on it. Right. Uh, other than that, uh, so fortifications are going great. Except... We don't really have the staff to man all of it effectively. Then so, we'll hire staff! <laughs> yeah, if you could find some more somewhere that aren't, you know, busy being hired out to other people in the middle of a civil war, that would be great. <laughs> probably, we could probably... We do have two groups, two options. Um, at least... Once we go towards Merdeal, we could try to negotiate with at least one of the factions. Um, I'll have to talk with... Crawley and Glantz is over towards the kitchen. We'll have to talk with everyone about that, but uh, no, thank you for mentioning it. Mentioning yeah, of course, it. of course, because... Uh, yeah, negotiating would be great. There is only so far that being neutral is going to take us. Yeah. Right, well... Uh, Unless you wanted to look at what else you could uh, start construction work on, I will leave you to clean up your mess and calculate how many days that uh, your friend's scam's gonna stop. Of course. Thanks for all that you do. We'll maybe have a have a day or so of peace and quiet. Here is hoping. Oh god, here is hoping. And Bert walks off. He does well. A break. So, Alex, is this enough grounds for me to suitably be able to change Scam's alignment to chaotic neutral? Yes. <laughs> Good. Oh my god. Good, I've been asking him to do that for a while. What was it before? Neutral. Oh. <laughs> that, makes, that makes sense. Well, uh, if that's all said and done... Gives, like, an awkward look to Malafine, and just like... I'm Malafine's just gonna... In Oh, yeah, okay, well, guns is to the kitchen there, okay? <laughs> Alright, she'll then go, okay, I'll just, I'll be in the library. And she gets up, but, like, as she's leaving, you can audibly hear her say, hmm, meaty flaps. I might put that in my next book. That's what she said. Scam <laughs> barfs. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner is concluded. Mama. Momo, can you take me up to my room, please? Okay. I assume that Scam kind of, like, put himself in, like, the bridal style of being yeah. held. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> yes, Scam, I will do that. Thank you. Um, he got two little something, and he pulls out, like, a, a small bottle of, like, scotch and starts bottle feeding. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> there, now do you feel better? <laughs> <laughs> Not so fast, you'll get a stomach ache. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh, Mama's gonna bring him to his room. Alex, I, yes? I just remembered this, but I do have a bag of flour and cinnamon on my persons from when we went to, um, I already forgot the name of it. Wow, Port Mirandu. From when we went to How long Mirandu. ago was that? How can you forget Port Mirandu? Mm. I think that was just before... It was a couple weeks ago, wasn't it? Maybe. No, 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 no. This was from a while ago. Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. I think this was, like, just before the, um... Before Dragatha. Yeah, because I remember him doing this. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know expiration dates off the top of my head because I'm a terrible cook, but I think it's reasonable to assume How flour and cinnamon. Last a while. How yeah, flour is fine. Cinnamon... cinnamon. Cinnamon would be fine. Yeah, cinnamon's it's dried. fine. Yeah, those are the, those are all right. Those aren't apples. They're not expired. I'm scared for this like bread amalgamation you're trying to make. <laughs> Could I use this as a means to like make one more check? <laughs> you'll be you'll be baking very late into the night, but if you want to, go for it. Define it. late into the night. When people are getting to sleep, you will have finished the sandwich. Like midnight, or probably yes. That is perfectly fine, actually. 
<laughs> Do it, coward. Do it, coward. Who's gonna make the check anyway? Jesus Christ. Do it now. Come on. Come on. I'm so scared. Um, do oh, I, that's want decent. To, I want to improve that? Do I want to improve that? I do still have the dance card. I'm not using that, for the record. <laughs> <laughs> How long ago right? did you get the dance card? That was a while back, but we never used it, so I still technically have it. No, that's. Yeah. Do I really want to use inspiration on this? Uh, I'm scared it? you're gonna get a shitty roll if you do. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm scared about that too. Well, you have a plus three, so. I'd say I wouldn't waste it on this. Because ten is a decent roll as it is. Considering I had a five earlier, you know what? That's fair. No, yeah. nine. Oh, one whole point. <laughs> one whole point <laughs> of difference, Cellophane. <laughs> Whatever. I'll leave it as is. You can recognize this as a sandwich, Melophane. Sandwich. It's not a sandwich! <laughs> you can recognize this as fruit and bread, Melophane. Thank you, Melophane. <laughs> um, I am going to pocket the, uh, the burnt bread, because that can be utility. Just shove it in your pocket. Basically. <laughs> Um, is that a terrible <laughs> bread fruit in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> um, that said, um, Malafane is going to replace the burnt bread, the burnt piece of shit bread, with the actually half-decent bread that he has. Mm. A bottle of wine, and he's going to, I'm assuming she's still there, head to the library. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll. If you're. It's around midnight, she'll probably still be there. She might just be about to leave. All right. All right. Fair. You get up to the library, not shitty bread and wine in hand. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay. This, this is a bad, this is a bad idea. This is your first step. This is your first step. You gotta make it up somehow. No, no, she's going to hate you. No, stop. Stop. <sighs> hmm? Oh, um, I'm sorry, I'm just about to close up. It's me. The you hear, like, and she opens the door. <laughs> hey. Oh, um... What are you doing? Um... I... I just wanted to, um... I, uh... Well... Uh, come in, come in. Uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Lock door behind. <laughs> um... Normally Malifane's a pretty stealthy guy. He's not making a very good attempt to hide the basket. <laughs> would would it smell like fresh? Uh, probably. I mean, he just baked it, so. Okay, yeah. she wouldn't say anything, but you hear that, you see that little nostril play, like you see her eyes light up a bit, but she just doesn't say anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, uh, day, how what uh, day? How was how was your I, I guess scam was the J. Oh, how are um, you? Um, I, I'm okay. Um, I, I I took a walk after all that mess. Um, yeah. I met your friend Annabelle. Right, Annabelle. Learned about the page golem. Right. I I I I'm sorry I didn't tell you about that. I I completely blanked out on that. <sighs> Why are you sorry? I should be I sorry. Keep, because I keep forgetting to tell you these things, and then I just, I don't update you, and it's a whole mess, and I, I don't know. Malafane, I... I kept the book a secret from you. What? And that was wrong. You know you could have just told us. 
It would have been a lot easier to fix things after that. I know, but it was... It wasn't the best time. I panicked. Scam was panicking, and I just... As stupid as it sounds, I went along with him, so... Well... You weren't the one who necessarily lost the book, though, were you? Well, no, but I was complicit. Yeah. Why don't we, uh... Why don't we sit down for for a bit? If you're here to break up with me, you can just say it. Wait, what? I know you're upset with me, but I'd prefer honesty. Quinn, I'm... If anything, I'm... I'm upset with myself, because I... I feel like I haven't... I haven't really been making time for you. I I haven't really been paying much attention to you. I guess. I mean, with everything going on with with my my mother and this whole civil war thing, and I don't know. I, this really isn't about. Oh, that, no, that that sounds terrible. no, Malafane. I haven't been paying enough attention to you. I I've been so worried about Eskal I didn't realize that I didn't realize how it would have been infecting you. I mean you're just as concerned about him, aren't you? I know, but I didn't mean for it to come across as I love him more because I didn't realize that's what it could look like. Look, me and you, we've always been... Well, how we got together specifically was a bit awkward. You know, we, we've spoken about this before. Um, I thought you were just... I thought you just stayed for Eskel's sake, but... I didn't really expect you to say that you liked me, and then when you did, I was like, oh, okay. Was that, that, kind of that's a, good. Um, it was kind of a spur of the moment. If anything, he encouraged me to come out with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... Surprise. <sighs> Did we do the right thing, though? What do you mean? I feel like you're right. Maybe it was a bit of spur of the moment. But I, I still grew to love you. Yeah. Yeah, me too. She then sits down. <laughs> which is why, <clears throat> which is why I want to give things another shot, if you're okay with that. And he opens up the the basket. What is this? I um, I did a little bit of. Skim wasn't the only one who did a bit of experimentation in the kitchen. Um, whether or not either of us were more successful than the other is up for debate, I suppose. She looks That's very funny. concerned when you say that. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, not not that, not in that regard. No. Um, I, I okay, guess so no I devil say, sandwiches. <laughs> no devil sandwiches. Um, it's just a bit of trial and error. He takes out the the loaf. I'm, I admittedly don't know if this is going to be any good or not, but I know how much you like fruit bread, so I, I made this. Um, I, I hope you made like this? It. Yeah, I, I did. It's For me? A, if you don't want any, that's that's fine. I, 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 I know if you're just upset. So I... <laughs> she blushes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about this whole thing. Uh... Can we... Can we start over? D Sorry, I'm I'm just trying to get over the fact you made this. Oh, uh, I mean, it, it's not anything special. It's just some yeast and. Some D do you mind if I try it? What? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay. Help yourself. Is it sliced already? 
Um, I don't think he actually did. I think he kind of just rushed to get to the library so he didn't lose track of Quintessa. Uh, do I have a... I don't have a dagger. Fuck, I can cut it with a hand oh. axe. <laughs> Dude, I wonder if we can go ask Mom. No. <laughs> uh, okay. She'll, like, pull out her hand axe that she's just got lying around, I guess. Ah, <laughs> uh, clean enough. Slices the bread. <laughs> In hindsight, I guess I should have brought a knife with me, but... I, it, it's I okay, it's okay. It's nice to be resourceful. Um, I, I guess. Uh, could have done with a bit of butter or something, but it's alright. She eats it. Malafane is... His eyes are just darting across the room. <laughs> All right, look at my face, Scott. This is what she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, is, is it too hot? I, I can probably find a way to cool down. I mean, <laughs> it's a bit soft, but it's homemade, and it's a really nice charm to homemade bread. She eats I'm... more. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Oh, don't let me stop you. You can have some too. Oh, uh, of, of course. Thank you. He takes a, a little bit for himself and... Wait, wait. Before we carry on, uh... Th d does this count as a... date? I, I mean, if you if you don't mind, I, I d just thought maybe, you know, because we, we did make that promise after all, so, you know, like... Mm. Alex. Yes. Alex, are there candles in the library? Why would you have candles in a library? That's the quickest way to set shit on fire. Why have candles in a the library? <laughs> there are candles God in the library. <laughs> Yay! She's just like, one second. She <laughs> good, good, good to know that Scam doesn't need to burn down the library for it to burn down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, she'll pull out these, like, um... Candles. I guess they have, like, little stands or whatever. And she just like runs, just plonk. She doesn't even put them in like a nice line. She just plonks them on the table, and then prestigitates them to light them. <laughs> After what so, you talk about? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, I I just heard that candles are a part of dates and stuff. Uh, oh, no, yeah, I, I I think I heard something like that. I think I can. I might be able to change the color of them. Oh, that that would be cool. Yeah. What do you like? Um, I mean, I, I anything is fine. I I I am partial to. You know, but uh, neutral tones. Uh, uh, whatever you like, yeah. Let's just keep them as they are. <laughs> after but, um, after mm -hmm. you spoke with Scam, which, by the way, I I apologize for that as well. I should not have been snooping around, but I uh, I just after what's been going on with the party, I just really want everyone to get along, and it's, I don't know. It, it, that's not working well. I, I guess I just wanted to just see what people were thinking, and well, I have no way to do that myself. I'm not well versed in magic. So. Um, did you hear everything? Everything. Malafane is going to keep that part to himself for now, and he says, "I'm not sure what you mean." Well, uh, what was the first thing you heard? Um, I I think I heard something about, like, uh, like, um, oh gosh. I'm totally not going back into the OneDrive to look at the very last thing <laughs> in the conversation thing. <laughs> what are you talking she just, about? She starts slowly chewing the bread. Like, she was hurrying through it before because it was just so nice, but now it's just savouring the taste before disaster. <laughs> The last thing I heard was something about someone sounding like a bastard, so I assumed you were talking about Raildrum. Oh. But you didn't hear what happened before? I guess not. If he's just kind of dark. His eyes dart for a, l a moment. Oh. Are you lying to me? <laughs> like, out of character. I think he's going to take some time to... Pro uh, because I need to think of something to say. I'm, he's taking yeah, some time to process that first. Okay, I think she'll notice, but she won't say anything because she's worried about it too. 
Okay. So she'll just be like, um, your heart was in the right place. But y- you could warn me next time before you eavesdrop. That would be nice. Of course. <laughs> I, I'll, 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 wait a minute. How do you even do that? Uh, well, as we were leaving, you could have said, hey, I'm just gonna listen outside the door if you don't mind. Something tells me that Scamuel wouldn't have approved of that anyways. Well, maybe, but I would have appreciated more if you'd have asked, and I would have probably said no, but, you know. (laughs) 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 (sighs) Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll be more careful of that next time. (laughs) But, I'm sorry. I... I really thought what we were doing before was enough, but uh, I guess walks aren't everything, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Th- 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 there was that actually. There was that one time we went out for dinner, but uh, I guess at the time I didn't really consider it a date. I thought it was just a publishing deal reward. You know what I mean? I, <laughs> I thought it was business. I guess you had been rather distracted once. Yes. Yeah. Once the waiter, I assume, came back with, what was that, cod, I guess? You were rather, well, kind of smothered in your book. (laughs) Not that I blame you. It's a very good read. (laughs) Wouldn't expect anything less. Well, when things calm down, I'll get back to working on the one I'm on now. Hey, um, I, I know that you probably still want to stick around for a bit, but I mean, and and I don't blame you either. But oh wait, never mind. He she said in public that she was going to stay with the group. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, throw that part out of the con. Well, no, 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 because she said like she she told Corellian that like I want to stay a bit longer. I don't think she told everyone, or she did. I can't remember. <laughs> Either way. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, I... I understand if you want to stay back at the... at Baton Rants. It... it I, this has probably been getting to you, and who am I to force you into doing something you don't want to do, you know? Um, and if that is what you want to do, then you know... I'm happy that you've been able to come to that decision, and I'm happy for whatever you do next. Malafane. Well, I'm an author. I'm a librarian now, yes, and I was kind of thinking that maybe... Maybe I should stay. Maybe this is where I belong. But at the end of the day... You know, I'm the child of soldiers. And with that comes honor. And maybe both of my parents are dead, but at the same time, I need to honor and respect them. I mean, (laughs) you know, my mother taught me how to use the bow. It would be a bit pointless not to use it. Are you sure both of them, though? (laughs) (laughs) Well, um, Arias did give me a roof over my head, so, well, all of our heads, really. I mean, maybe he wasn't, he was militaristic, but he wasn't cruel. I suppose everyone has their different methods. I mean, my mother, she was certainly more of a uh, a hands-on woman, but she got the job done, so... It makes me wonder how she even continued living by that code, given her more uh, aggressive demeanor. (laughs) That's... well, that's why I want to stay. I want to... I want to meet your mother like how she was before. And maybe it won't be the exact same as how she was before, but... You know the book I'm working on, right? Hmm. 
Right. <laughs> sorry, my internet died for a moment. Oh, sorry. You know the book I'm working on, right? Which one was that again? Rose on the Battlefield. Yes, okay. I do recall that. Well, it's kind of a testament to my own mother, yes, but... I want to dedicate it to Azalea. So this is more of an amalgamation of two characters, then? (laughs) Well, when you put it like that... I mean, I don't want to speak for what your mother did or anything, but... (sighs) I mean, even with her the way she is, she kind of filled the gap for my mother being gone. I hope I'm not overstepping by saying that. Not at all. Though, if anything, I'm surprised that my father really was more of the the figure that you... I thought my father was more of the figure that you aspired, if anything. I mean... Oh, of course he is. That, what was that one book that he showed you about the, uh, about the arcane with the bow? Oh... I can't remember the title, but yes. I guess we're all we're all influenced by different people in our lives. Absolutely, and well, you know, I got more recently. I got my influence from both you and Eskel. So this is a nice date. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, I'm glad you like it. I... Do you have wine there? Oh, uh, yes. I, 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 <gasps> I drink it myself, but I mean, if you want some, please help yourself. Give me the wine! <laughs> oh, I don't have cups. Bugger. Um... Oh, I, I think I have some here in the basket. They're, they're not oh, good. Really okay. fancy or anything, but they're, they're, they're standard enough. Of course, of course. Just fills it up to the brim. <laughs> Say, I, I don't know if this seat sounds uh, a little forward of me, but do you want to just, you know, spend the night later? Uh, with, with, with me? I mean, we don't have to, like, obviously do anything. Just you, you know, just spend some time. Oh, um... Like, I don't know. No, um... <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> I'm sorry, was that, that may have been No, no, it's just, I mean, I just kind of realized that you say that, but that kind of, um... You say that every time you spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's not really something I've really put into words, though. Yeah, I mean, I mean, most of the time Eskel comes out anyways, but, um... <laughs> I mean, let's just... I'll drink slowly. I'll eat the bread. Let's just let's just see where this takes us. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like that. Hey. I really do love you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love you too, Quinn. I really do. Beautiful. That was so disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that was so cute. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Meanwhile, Aurelian, you try to get some sleep, and you hear the sound of crickets chirping pretty loudly. So they keep you up enough to notice someone trying to jimmy open your bedroom window. Aurelian is going to very slowly reach for the closest weapon that they have on hand. Probably probably the pick. And just sort of like sort of peep an eye open and see if they could get a get a look on who or right. what is trying to get in. I'll say that uh, this particular character's dexterity is reasonable enough that they could Reasonably unlatch the window in a safe amount of time. So, 
as they slide the window up and start to clamber in, you notice the familiar shape of chicken bait crawling through the bedroom window. Oh no. <laughs> Curly like exhales and like sort of sits up. You're right there. How dare you taunt me, you know Miss Steven! Chicken bait yells, pulling out this really worn looking dagger at you. Oh my god. Um Mosca, just hold on. Uh Krillian like lapses into Draconic. It's me, just an illusion, it's Krillian. Chicken bait gasps. Leans down to look at your stomach. Oh my god! Krillian, you've been eaten by a gnome! It, it, it's just an illusion. I just, I just look like this. It's magic. Um, the whole- of course it's here, your here. foul Close. magic, you vile gnomish beast! How dare you invade on my home and then pretend like you're my friend and everything's fine here, when you just hand. hate him! Give me your hand. No! Fuck you! Says Chicken Bait, just wildly waving the dagger at you. Krillian rolls their eyes and, like, reaches out and just sort of, like, takes Chicken Bait's wrist. Make Feel my hand, check. it's still scaled. Sure. You're gonna have to give me a second, I haven't. Uh, Chicken Bait. Du- ducks out of the way, clearly expecting a quote-unquote attack. <laughs> Mosca, can you sit on him? <laughs> Mosca just immediately walks over and sits on chicken bait, and you hear some more mumbled cursing in Draconic. Krillian, still speaking Draconic, is going to squat down and sort of, like, find chicken bait and just Listen, just take my hand. Just please. I will not be de- I will not be deceived by gnomes again. The whole point is that I can't deceive people so I can stay in this disguise so that I don't get shot on sight when I go into the elfin city. That fine, sounds like fine. a gnomish lie to me. Fine. What uh ask me what is something that only Corellian would know? What is my name? Snorn. That's not the right pronunciation, you foolish gnome! <laughs> Corellian rolls their eyes. Are you done? No? No? Oh, alright, so, um... What what was the angle? You were going to come in here and slit my throat, or I mean, what? that that was the idea. Clearly, that's gone off the rails. Yeah, um, yeah, no, uh, definitely. Uh, listen, you could make fine. Believe whatever you want. I'm still Corellian, unfortunately. And I'm still here, and pretty much everyone else will vouch for that fact. Whether you believed or not is up to you. Oh my god, I'm going to be gaslit by a gnome and his gnome cronies! Hey DM? Yes? We've established the rough layout of that fact that Scam sleeps next door to Krillian, yeah? Yes. Has Scam heard yelling? <laughs> Probably. Chicken bait's not Scam. particularly stealthy. Scam kicks down the door with a flamethrower. <laughs> Put that I, shit I heard away. I heard... Put that shit away. Why are you why did you why is your first instinct to bring your flamethrower into what time is it? I I know I was sleeping and I heard yelling and why is Mashka sitting on a kobold? <laughs> uh chicken bait. He works in the stables. He's sure that I'm a gnome who has come to or who has kidnapped and taken Corellian's place even though I am Corellian and he won't believe me otherwise. Also apparently is eating Corellian <sighs> given the way they're doing Corellian's voice. Hey buddy, chicken bait your name was, yeah? Yep. You see his stupid gnomish face? No. I, I see a lot of white fur in my face. Mosh. Mashka, can you shift your cheeks? 
Mustka's cheeks are not, in fact, on, uh, on chicken bait, so she just shifts her actual cheeks. Yes. All right, you see his stupid gnomish face? No, still, still the fur. Mosca, if you wouldn't mind letting him see a bit. Mosca stands hey. up. Chicken bait just, like, plastered to the floor, white fur scattered all over his face. Yeah, yeah, okay, now can you see his stupid gnomish face? As if there's any other kind of gnomish face. Fucking right. Anyway, um, no, so you see that, how it's a face that has a flatness to it, yeah? It's, there's no snout coming off of it? That is correct. Okay, now wave the air in front of its nose. I'm trying to think of how exactly the... Lady Fomar's disguises work because it would not be as simple as disguise self. Oh, is the I thing. thought it was like it was. It was one of, it, oh, is it like similar to an alter self spell, or is it like a? Uh, basi- it- um, like she's high enough of a noble in the Fey Court that it's basically kind of polymorph, but not really. She doesn't actually change your form, but for all intents and purposes. She does, if that makes sense. So, like, Uh, the usual trick of waving a hand on someone to check if that's the exact body type would not work. I I, I think I loosely get what you're going for. (laughs) Okay, Um, I'm I'm probably explaining it very badly. I'm sorry. Okay. Grellian, I don't want to ask, I don't want to poke around in your mouth, but, like, you still have your normal teeth, yeah? Even though they look like not normal teeth? Yeah, they're still sharp to me. Okay, cool. Hey, buddy, when you look in their mouth, do you see sharp teeth or gnomish teeth? Ah. Corellian, <laughs> not Corellian, chicken bait, pushes up, this. looks in the mouth. The filthy jaws of a gnome! I hate yeah, okay. so much. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> okay, now stick your finger just... in their mouth. No, oh, what the you fuck? fucking taught the what the fuck scam. I what figure we're all still talking in Draconic. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm also speaking in Draconic with the rest of you. <laughs> Momo, you, <laughs> Momo just sees the three of us talking in Draconic. What is this? A Momo's just farce? growling in frustration at this point. Momo's gonna cast tongues on himself. Why didn't I play a bard? Scam could have written the funniest fucking farce in all of Arion. <laughs> Out of, the the li- out of character, Malifane in the out of character in the library, Malifane and Draconic says, "Do you hear something? Mm-mm. You don't speak Draconic. <laughs> you don't speak Draconic. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, that's not entirely true. That don't uh, work I like that. that. Uh, oh, Wait, you mean the adept draconic? linguist from from hanging around kobolds? Is that what you're saying? You know how to say Donde está el baño, and that <laughs> lets you understand all that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> how did you understand? Tell how, me. Why do you have Tell Draconic? Tell me. What is the main like? What are the main languages of kobolds? Draconic, specifically a tongue known <laughs> as Yik-Yak. 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 Anyway, continue. Okay. I, was, I, no, I was about to be like, yo, I played an anthropologist. The feature don't work like that. It doesn't um, entirely work like It's not that strong. You can understand basic concepts. It's like knowing Spanish and talking to someone who only speaks Italian. <laughs> Well, yeah, it was out of character, anyways. So. Yeah, anyway. anyways. Yeah, yeah no. I have ruined your out of character joke because I am an evil DM. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thwart it again. Next, I shall bathe in children's tears. Oh. Anyway, Momo is just stormed in, cast tongues, to understand draconic, yell, "What's going on?" He sees like scam putting his grubby fingers on Corellian's face. And I am Mosca doing no such thing. He's not doing any such <laughs> thing. <laughs> well, then I misunderstood and I apologize. You're okay. So, like, listen, chicken bait. Look, buddy, you need to get like, you actually, you're it. You actually came at a good time. I've recently become a therapist, apparently. So let's address what's wrong with you. Um, Hold you, on. you, you chicken think- bait. Just ask Mosca. Chicken bait's eyes. Go lazy. He slowly turns to Mosca. Points over at Corellian. Is that Corellian? Mosca just looks over at Chicken Bait. No, I'm Corellian. Why didn't you tell me earlier? 
<laughs> hey, man, I didn't want to blow my cover, but now ah, you know the objective monster. truth. <laughs> Uh, for all intents and purposes, Mosca said absolutely yeah. nothing and somehow Chicken Maid understood that. <laughs> yes, no, I am Corellian. I have to, I didn't want to blow my cover. Oh my god, this... a goblin is trying to imitate Corellian! Quick Corellian, we've gotta stop him! So that's right, Corellian. gladly. I point... <laughs> so I point at the gnome, like, so that is Corellian? Yep. Allegedly that's Corellian. Also you're Corellian, but I think you're lying. He is yeah, no, he's just taking the piss. That's, That's scam. Right. It re- he remains scam, unfortunately. Yes, I am scam. Scam, you'll fall on these likely. You want to buy a sundial? <laughs> what time is it? Time to get a watch! Bow! And scam li- like leaves the room and goes back to bed. Thank God that's over. So, um... Were you still wanting to go for the throat slitting thing? I mean, not if you're not a gnome, then I wouldn't really have any good gnome slitting things that would work whoa, on you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Throat slitting? What? Don't, happened? don't, don't worry about it. It's okay, fine. Okay, so uh, gnomes are the worst. There's your history lesson. Yeah, basically. Did any questions? Be- Did something happen between you and the gnomes, chicken bait? Well, I mean, me personally, they're the worst. It's a whole thing. Um, Kurtulmak and Gnomish God and Kobold God, you know, some fucked shit happened way back when. And in brief, most Kobolds and Gnomes hate each other's guts. Gnomes are the worst. Mm. Krohn sort of, you know, does a little like head shake nod like mm-hmm. so any questions no I'm going back to bed good call uh, yeah I, I'm just gonna sorry and then I'm just gonna go you don't have to climb out the window <laughs> chicken just... bait is already climbing out the window <laughs> uh, uh, alright Curly, like, leans out the window to make sure he makes it to the ground safely. I'm okay! Scam looks out his bedroom window, quickly scribbles something down, folds up into a paper airplane, opens his window, and throws it down at Chicken Bait and closes his window. Alright, Chicken Bait is stupid enough to not pick up the paper airplane. I don't think you understand how low Chicken Bait's intelligence is. Damn it. Ah, that was a good piece of paper, too. Shit, you better go get that. I go back to bed. All right. Colin slowly closes the window, latches it again, and just... Uh... (laughs) All right. Morning comes, but you are not woken up by the sounds of construction. Yay. Whoa. We had a great night. <laughs> What's for B Fast? What is for B Fast? Let us find out together. Woo! Woo! Breakfast. Fried eggs. <gasps> oh, eggs. I like eggs. Egg. Such a good word. Egg. It's like, it starts in the middle of the mouth. Egg. And it like, it it plosives from the back out to the front. It's too early for this. Um, Didn't get enough sleep there, Corellian? We got plenty of sleep. It's just too bright out. It's always too bright out. Hmm. You know, I was thinking about that. I think we got a new business venture. What if the way we win the war is by digging underneath everybody? I think the Oread have that covered. So we yeah. sw- so we dig under them, and then we are the smart ones. We will what did I say about you. it being... Kind of <laughs> we'll when the Cordia by- destroy us... <laughs> Momo, would you like to speak words? 
Yes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I feel like we would either be destroyed by be lost in caves or drown in water. Yeah, in underground yeah. springs. No, I know, I know, I that, know. That's not how it, oh, never mind. Mm. Oh, oh shit. Say- what? Sorry, guys. I forgot I was supposed to start today. All right. Starting now, the stoppage commences. This is Good boy. Oh, Probably, also, like, oh. leans forward. <laughs> so how far does this stopping go, I wonder? One That's day. That's a very good question. I thought you were stopping, Scam. Mm. <laughs> Javini <laughs> is holding, <laughs> Javini's holding up a sign behind Scam that says, Stop. <laughs> Gods above, mm. this is wonderful. Ooh, mm. I have a challenge. If Scam mm. fails to stop, he has mm. to not have any alcohol mm. for the next week. Mm. Oh, what's this? I think he would die. I don't know about dying. He can have water. Mm. And. I would be nice and say he can have wine. Guys, I think he looks like he's in actual pain right now. Mm-hmm. Now that's just his Please face. don't bite through your tongue entirely. <laughs> mm-hmm. Spit out a little bit of blood. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Please don't. You lot, he can still talk, right? Like a bit. I, I assume he can talk. Yeah, I'm good. Wonderful weather we're having. Right. Uh, actually, I'd like right to... Uh, it, it's pretty good. Like, there are a couple clouds in the sky, but not enough to make it overcast. Oh, okay. Yes, I'd say it is. <sighs> so this is what normal people do. Yes, Scam. This is what normal people do in our normal everyday lives. You look like you're uh, in mental turmoil. Fetch me a newspaper, Bert. <laughs> Get one yourself, Beck Wayne. You hear Bert call over. <laughs> oh. Mm, <laughs> yep. Scam, um, after breakfast, could we have a bit of a chat? You mind? Uh, yes, of course, Corellian. That sounds like a lovely way to spend the morning. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, I believe 24 you, you hours. Do, do you taste metal? Uh, you always taste Maybe metal. blood. Taste bread. <laughs> I taste a lot. <laughs> if you're tasting bread and your eggs, that's something very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we can talk after breakfast. That sounds nice. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat my food. <laughs> Beautiful. You know what? I can excuse this. This is alright. And he says this genuinely. (laughs) And he takes a bite of his eggs. Yay. So, uh... Are we gonna sort out the flower today, or...? That's actually what I was going to speak with Scam about. Yeah. We do need to bring it to Kelwin, yes. Yes, that is the plan. Then ah, that, that is, is what, what I was going do. to speak with Scam. Sure. Okay. Very good. Yay! Mama, how are you doing over there? Hmm? Fine. That is not the fine of a fine person. What does a fine person sound like? My most fine. Uh, Thank you. He's a fine lad. The finest lad. Oh, uh, I'm not suggesting at all he isn't a fine lad, but... Oh, stop. <laughs> if he wants to talk, he doesn't. If he doesn't want to talk, he doesn't have to talk. Oh no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that you shouldn't put yourself down, Momo. You are a very fine lad. He like does the stop at you thing with his hand. <laughs> <laughs> We're technically getting along. Hooray! Don't yeah. ruin the illusion. <laughs> this hurts. I'm leaving. I'm gonna go somewhere else. <laughs> Bye. Uh, compliments, my worst enemy. <laughs> right, so, um, Scam, I think you still have the, uh, 
the vessel in your possession, so... Yes. Somewhere, I think. I haven't lost it yet. Yet. So, yeah, everyone's gonna go off see Kelwin, yes? Yes. Correct? Yeah. Okay. Alright. You, uh, you head upstairs toward the herbalism lab, passing by uh, a massively expanded wing of the manor, extending out towards the outdoor training grounds. Uh, the practice range is complete. <gasps> yes! Oh, Malafine is very happy. Excellent. Uh, I feel like Malafine would have to, like, drag Quintessa away from it. <laughs> who was the one who requested the training grounds be completed first? I know, but at the same time... <laughs> Alright, we'll drag each other away. <laughs> Just this pile of dragging that creates a perpetual motion machine. <laughs> I can't believe we're gonna do a spin ball. Quick, yeah. Bert, get me a patent before it goes away. <laughs> Bert already has pen and paper in hand. Anyway, you head upstairs <laughs> and uh, knock on the door of the herbalism lab. Uh, Scamp's like standing there like holding the, like the orb, the, the storage vessel, and just like knocks on the door and just goes man, wouldn't it suck if it's like dead or dying or broken in there? Man, that would be so anticlimactic. Kelwin opens up the door. Oh, like puts uh, his head in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> so is this a good thing or a bad thing? Because I'm already seeing a little bit of crying. We have procured you the Mortish Memoria. Uh, Kelwin looks over, points at the orb. In the orb? Yes. We ran into some trouble with the original vessel that you provided, unfortunately, so we had to oh, improvise. Make okay, um, I, I, I can work with this. Uh, he, uh, you he just break for, it open. They gesture for the orb. Pardon me. Oh. Hand over the orb. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kellen walks into the into the herbalism lab. You hear this, <laughs> and then this buzzing <laughs> cry, and then Kellen walks outside with half of the orb and the Mortis Memoria in the half that they're carrying. While like while they hear the buzzing scam, just says herbalism is such a gentle profession. You're so fascinating. Ah, <laughs> uh, right. Looks like you got a. Fairly good sample if it was able to survive in there without access to pretty much anything. Again, though, Mortis Memoria can survive a long time without uh, sunlight, water, soil, and the like. Um, ju just this one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunately. The only specimen that we could find. Okay. Um, I'm, I think I can... I think I can work with this. If I can't, that's going to be very unfortunate. Um... Kelwin looks over at all of you. Are any of you familiar with herbalism? Like, if if I handed you a kit, would you know what each part does? I would know what each no. part does. Now, my usage of it is not something I've ever done, but at least I have read of what they do. But no I do one is asking understand. if you are proficient in the herbalism kit. Yeah, I know. Kit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, wait, hold on. I might be... It's at this point that I, the player, realize that I accidentally took the alchemist supplies instead of the herbalism kit. I am a fool. Rip in skip. No, Rip I don't see it anywhere. Reason. Whoops. Get wrecked, a scrub. Okay. Oh, did we done fuck? <laughs> All right. In that case, I would strongly advise that no one, or at least none of you, come in here for the rest of the day. I would. Okay. I. You know, if you're certain, I could stay in here. I have a way of, uh, you know, giving flashes of insightful genius yeah. when working, so. Kelwin sure. starts strapping on this, uh, this mask with a whole bunch of filters and, like, covering basically their entire face with huge glass bottles covering their eyes. It's a gas mask for all intents mm -hmm. and purposes. Strongly recommend against being potentially... Poisoned with a deadly, deadly flower if this goes horribly wrong. I'm right. sure you'd be better off looking for something else. Sure. Um, I could go run, ask the resident alchemist if she's proficient. Would she be helpful in oh, this Oh, right, right. You? You, 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 mentioned, you mentioned she'd be able to help. Uh, she is... If she knows what she's doing, then she's fine. 
All right, I'll go. Um, I'll go ask her about it then. I'll go with you. Be right you back. If you like. All right. Brisk jog. Cool. Brisk jog out to the alchemist lab. Uh, Annabelle is out there just unlocking stuff. Oh, Annabelle. Um, nice to see you. Sorry, a uh, bit of a bit of a sudden question. Are you're good with an herbalism kit? Are you? Yes. Um. Is 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 this about uh, is this about like the you asked me about the about the, the the flower you were after right? Yes, the Mortis Memoria, Kelwin the herbalist. Uh, they're about ready to start synthesizing it, and any help on deck would be good if that's something uh, you could provide. Y- yeah, yeah, I I I, I can def- I can definitely definitely help with that. Annabelle says. Can she actually? I'm, uh, that wasn't exactly inspiring. Make an insight check. Okay. So when you last asked if Annabelle knew what she was doing in the case of the Mortis Memoria, she rolled a one. <laughs> it would be very, Annabelle. very dangerous to let Annabelle work on the Mortis Memoria. Uh, Annabelle, it's fine. You sure? It's fine. I mean, because if you need my help, then I can I can see what I can do. Or if you're not a hundred percent confident, then it's absolutely fine, Annabelle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll keep making potions in here. And she says, awkwardly shuffling towards the front door of the alchemist's lab. Thank you, sincerely, Annabelle. Thank you. Curling about faces, and then <laughs> as soon as we're out of like sight and earshot, just <sighs> right. Let's let's get back with the news then, huh? You brisk jog back into Baton Rance Hall. Uh, has has Kelwin started yet, or no? Um, if you were going to get Annabelle, Kellen would have delayed a little bit if it was very clear you weren't going to do anything else in between. Yeah. Um, then on the way back, once once we get back to the herbalism lab, uh, Carlin's sort of, (sighs) bad news, unfortunately, she's not as confident as she thought she was, so it'd probably be best if you handle this. Okay. Okay. Uh, Kelwin adjusts their gas mask. First major herbalism project out of the university, and so working on the Mars Memorial by myself. This is this is gonna be fine. This is gonna be fine. Thank you. And Kelwin closes the door of the herbalism lab, and you hear some very thick locks chunk chunk shut. Ooh. I'm very worried for him. They'll be fine. Then they'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. I hope they'll be fine. Sorry, I pray. I'm so upset. Well, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> at least, well, hopefully we won't get gas. It will be fine. Kelwin knows what they're doing. They've got resources. It'll be all right. Carlian says, trying to reassure people but mostly themselves. <laughs> so, nothing to do but wait, then. Well? Um, this seems like a good time to go to the practice grounds, am I right? Oh, that's right. Those are finished, aren't they? Yes. Oh, I- you know what? Perhaps we should put them to you, Smellophane. You're not very good at being subtle. He kind of gives like a snicker. I know. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, the practice rounds, uh, the practice range, rather. It's fairly new, like not very fancily decorated, but it has plenty of like targets and markers at like what range weapons are effective. 
including a couple for siege weapons, even though there's no practical way to get a siege weapon wheeled through the front gates of Baton Rance and into the practice range, unless they, like, broke down a wall to do that. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, Malphane is on the ground, kind of just doing some stretches, and he kind of just says out loud to whoever's listening, I guess, well, considering I don't exactly have my mother's blade at the moment, I guess this will give me an excuse to practice with some other weapons. Oh, yeah. When are we getting that back? Who knows? Honestly, I'm just glad that all, everything is okay over there. That's the wrong, that's that's the wrong music. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it. Duh! Be prepared to practice archery! Duh! <laughs> all right. Uh, right. Currently running the practice range is a uh, rather scrawny looking half orc eye patch over his eye and like buzz cut with half of half of his hair being draped to one side. The rest just like buzzed down. Looks over, gives a curt wave and a nod, goes back to uh, hanging up a couple of uh, short bows, long bows and the like along the wall. Uh, that looks nice. And waves back. <laughs> um, so you said that some of these targets are like dedicated to certain kinds of weaponry or something like that. Um, it's less that the targets. Uh, let, let me let me backtrack a little bit. They have separation walls for like different types of ranged weaponry, like thrown weapons at one side, short bows at the other, long bows at the other. And then there's one that's just basically like theory craft how far siege weapons can go. Like if you're being shot at by a cannon, what's the safe range to get to? That sort of thing. Okay. I think I get it. Okay. So what you want to do? Oh, well... Actually, what weapons... Remind me again, because uh, does Quintessa have any other weapon other than her bow on her person? Or? She does. She has... Let me look. Um, She's got a long bow, her rapier, a short sword, and a hand axe. Oh boy. Let's see. Would you like me to lend you a weapon? Uh, I don't think that'll be necessary. Sans the blade... Uh, sans the rapier... Mel has his robe bow, a dagger, a javelin, a hand cast, and a quarter staff. I thought you called the rapier sons for a second. Oh god, no. <laughs> that's, that's, when, that's where Momo's name went. <laughs> uh, I forgot that that happened. Yeah, um... <laughs> um Alright, well, I will get to practicing then. And I'm not trying to show off, but she's definitely showing off. <laughs> You uh, you definitely show off because you have freaky good ability to hit targets, especially ones that are just kind of like set up, not moving. Half orc's not looking your way. Oh, um, she would because I just haven't been able to use it yet. She would want to experiment with the ink, um, bow thing, not bow arrow. <laughs> right, right, yeah. The the ink arrow, uh, uh. Something exactly the size and shape of an arrow just manifests out of the ink on your arm and puts itself into position along the longbow. And as you fire it off, it just <sighs> silently hisses through the air, strikes one of the targets, and then <sighs> bursts into ink that quickly vanishes itself. I will never get used to that. Well, it's the first time I've used it. <laughs> Those void arrows do psychic damage, so it did absolutely nothing to the training dummy. <laughs> Turns to Malafit. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you haven't put more used to that. Well, I've been a bit worried. Um, like as much as this ink is useful, I kind of want to get rid of it eventually. I mean, fair enough. Do you I'm not even sure how you would go about doing something like that. It's certainly nothing I've ever seen. Well, I tried to ask the book, and, you know, the book didn't answer, and now we can't ask the book. Yeah, fair enough. You see, I remember, didn't, um... Actually, I forgot. No, wait, no. Momo only said that's Krillin's game. Never mind. Um, mm -hmm. 
wonder if there's a way that we can, I don't know, sense where it might be or something. As he mm. kind of just um, takes aim with his bow. Actually, he's going to... Uh, He's going to uh, put a little more focus. In... I'm doing this for solely for flavor text. Let's just yeah, be perfectly clear about this. Um, he takes <laughs> a little bit more focus with his uh, with his aim than usual, and uh, he uses his uh, his. Oh, right! I didn't use the bubble. Uh, he uses his uh, snipe maneuver. So. <laughs> you do some sniping. Again, it's unmoving target, so it's not a particularly uh, hard thing to hit. But you are very precise as to where your arrows land with sniping. I don't think I've really hit a target that far before. Well, practice makes perfect. You would know. You're the one who taught me that in the first place. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But as to what you said, I doubt we'd be able to sense it. If it's been taken somewhere else. Might unfortunate. Hmm. Well, we'll get it back. Uh, Don't know how, but we'll get it back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Now, watch the pro. Point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Pro, make your mark. She makes a mark because I can't be bothered to roll. <laughs> I'm yeah. I'm just gonna assume because you have that absurd bonus to hitting things with the bow and the long bow, you're not gonna have any trouble hitting anything in the practice range. And as you keep on doing this, you hear someone knock on the wall. Turn. There is a tabaxi standing there with a long package. Mail call. And he tosses it over towards Malafane. <gasps> Ooh, Alex. What are the precise measures of this package? Open it! You recognize the exact freaking measurements of that package, Melophane. You spent long enough around the crescent blade to know what's in the the package. Melophane just smiles and said, Oh, well, that was quick. Well, that answers that question. (laughs) He opens the box and takes out his crescent blade, and I can finally add that plus ten back to my speed. Yay! The crescent blade is back. There is a note. It reads, Your blade is returned. This concludes our arrangement. Your services are no longer required. Yay! I'll take it. (laughs) You know, and and he kind of just looks over the blade, but he says out loud, You know, all things considered, it may not have been the most, um, the most pleasant of exchanges, but if this means we're on better terms than we were before, and he looks back to Quintessa, I think this is a good start. Um, how petty are elves? Are you asking me? <laughs> no, I'm asking him. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ask Alex. Incredibly. You know they might have put that in something bad. They might have pissed on it before they gave it back to you. Oh, it's... I already put... It's Alana, I doubt that. <laughs> well, you never know. Mm. I'll let you... Well, have fun with your piss blade. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. No, let's go back to it. <laughs> oh, All right. gosh. Meanwhile, Momo, the male tabaxi... Uh, runs over, holds out a letter. Delivery! Oh! He takes it in, like, hurriedly opens it. Is this the one from Magdor? This is from Magdor. Okay, he opens it and starts reading it immediately. Little brother, the symptoms you've described to me don't seem to be directly related to necromancy. Sure, it can do some... Weird, weird stuff to your body and your mind, but uh, being called to cast it more and more, that's the sign of an addictive personality rather than being cursed by dark magic. All depends on how you use it, of course. Raising the dead is necromancy that's not inherently evil. Making an undead with it, like a zombie or a skeleton, people tend to frown on that a whole lot more. If you have any questions, you can 
do your best to get here and hopefully not die, which means you probably won't be able to get here. Well, I'm not as... He's not as, like, enthralled with it as he used to be, so that's a sign of yay, I guess, but... (laughs) He still misses him, so he might make a, a trip and a half to go see him and maybe get some techniques down or something. For those of you in the chat who forget, Magder is currently, for all intents and purposes, a prisoner in Demdor, the city of the Oread. Oh. Mm-hmm. He could totally just pop on by, right? <laughs> just strut right on in! <laughs> Hey guys, Flutter don't down. mind me, I just, uh, I almost killed your leader. Hey, I'm just here to visit my friend. Get hey, his ass, friend. says Pinch Sword. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah. It occurs to me, and I know I've mentioned this before, that, well, the Oread are the only group uh, that are probably on uh, the worst terms with us right now. Bro, are you joking? Yeah. The Bro, are you joking me? You joking? <laughs> Bro, are you joking? Bro, the word they fucking hate the, the us. We're on slightly better terms. The now. Fucking You're O-Kidi. on slightly better O-Kidi. terms. Yeah, what about the rest the, of you? The Okidi are okay, I think. I hope, I pray. The Okidi I... have a fire destructive <sighs> ring with them. And you tried to kill a lot of them to take it from them. It's true. Mm. Right. I so I think best case scenario, we hop on a boat and we just leave Erion. There's too many problems. <laughs> just we're tired, let's go home. That's it, we're canceling Erion. We also just didn't even mention the marrow, because boy howdy. <laughs> we're not gonna talk about the marrow. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And but yeah, no, we're on we're on great. Terms Man, we're people. really not good at what we do. <laughs> <laughs> you took the neutral path. This is where it leads. Me, not sure anymore. It only makes sense. Reminder: it just works. Fire Emblem Fates is not a good game. Rip. <laughs> All right. Well, mail having been delivered, is there anything else anyone wants to do during the day? Not that I can think of. Mm-hmm. All right. In that case, the day passes. Those of you who happen to be by the herbalism lab hear the chunk, chunk of some locks being unlatched. Mm-hmm. Helwyn opens the door, holding this uh, tightly bound uh, leather bag in their hands. I think I got it. Momo, like, takes it. Uh, you try, uh, Kelwyn yanks the bag away. Don't, 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 do not touch this. Unless it is with thick leather gloves, at the very least. Okay, okay. Any other precautions we should be taking, and also, use, use, how should we use it? Right, um... Assuming that this is not, in fact, just poisonous gas, there's a little, there's a little sack of fluid that went with it. Uh, Kelwin leans around the door frame, h- holds out a glass vial. Here, also, I wouldn't recommend touching this without thick leather gloves. But you put this on the subject that you want to, for all intents and purposes, go into the mind of. Just smear a little bit on their forehead. Should be just enough to do that. And then open the bag. If I did it right, then you'll be, like, in a representation of their mind. Oh. And if you did it wrong? Then everyone in that room is going to die. Well, that's great, isn't it? Uh, That's fine. Thank you, Kilwin. For the work that you've done. Remind yeah. me what the gloves of thievery are made of again. Gloves of thievery. Let me double check, actually. Okay. The gloves of thievery are invisible, uh, by the way. So, 
Son of a bitch, they don't show up in the Roll20 SRD. <laughs> wow. Alright. Come on, Dungeon Master's Guide. Load, you monstrous behemoth. Alright. Magic <laughs> items. And... Gloves of Thievery. Does not specify. God damn it. Damn it. We I don't suppose we can say for all intents and purposes that they're thick leather gloves. <laughs> uh, they'd be thin leather, but basically oh. anything armored that is made to protect the hands will work for handling the Mortis Memoria. Well, I have gauntlets. Those work that fine. fine. Yes. All right. Nice. In that case, I will be doing the handling. Also, all you right. know. I, I'm not the worst person to be poisoned of everyone, so... Yeah. Yeah, Corellian's a paladin. <laughs> they... They'll be fine, fingers crossed. Don't knock, say knock. fingers crossed. Just say they'll be fine and I'll believe it. They'll be fine. <laughs> they'll be fine and I believe it. They'll be fine. Thank you. This, um, manifestation of that person's mind... Is that just something that appears, like, you know, around us? Or is it more of a transported? Like, how does that... Um, I don't know how that works. From everything I read, you basically go into a trance-like state and just, like, find yourself there. Something like a demi plane, now that I think about it. Heavily magic, this, uh, the, this flower. Well, all right then. Malifane is a bit more concerned now about using this than he was before. You can probably see it on his face. Mm -hmm. Right, well, he is I, now in fear. I need to get a drink. Best of luck with whatever you plan to do with that, and whatever you do, do not... Open that bag until you're ready. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Cullen. Thank you, Cullen. And they head off towards the tavern. Out of character. Scott, if you make Malafane not want to use that flower after everything, I will <laughs> I hunt you down and you'll face my wrath. I know. I know. Well then. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> you can't yes, see we it, got it. Don't you was giving me an eye. <laughs> the eye. The eye. The eye. Right, so that's it. Alright. So, unless anyone has anything else to say for the day, it is a bit late to head out to Baylight, especially since we're at time. So, with the dangerous Mortis Memoria in their hands, and the hope that it was prepared correctly, our heroes settle down for the night. And that is where we'll end our session. You know, heroes is a loose term. I don't subscribe to the notion. Our, our player characters. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you all next week for more Fallen Empires. Tune in Thursday for The Cannibal Conspiracy Returns, Friday for Call of Cthulhu, and Sunday for Team Murder. I believe Darby is also going to try and do something this week. Thank you very much. Enjoy Camp Streamix, and we'll see y'all later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.